to the Aaron's 499 Winston Cup race from Talladega. And the drivers, uh, their teams, the fans uh, anxious to go. Over 150,000 people gathering here to watch the best drivers in America go at it. Let's go trackside for the opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the U.S. Army Forces Command Color Guard from Fort McPherson, Georgia, presents today's colors. Please welcome Major Robert Suave, second recruiting brigade chaplain from the United States Army Recruiting Command as he delivers today's invocation. Let us pray. God, we're thankful to be here today. We remember the soldiers and the servicemen that are, and women that are deployed in Iraq and around the world. Keep them safe and be with their families to keep them safe also. Be with the drivers here today. Grant them your guidance. Keep them all safe on the track and help us all as we have a safe journey as we go to our home. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Second Lieutenant Leo Pena from the United States Army Ground Forces Band as he performs God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my Sweet home, God bless America, my home, sweet home. Please remain standing as Staff Sergeant Derek Percival of the 42nd Contracting Squad from Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama performs today's National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were streaming and the rockets red Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled give a special thanks to Staff Sergeant Derek Percival. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome the only quarterback in NFL history to lead his team to four consecutive Super Bowls, Jim Kelly. Gentlemen, start your engine.
Every race is the Super Bowl on Fox. You heard the Grand Marshal, D.W., on his way up to the booth to call the race with Larry McReynolds and Mike Joy. Jeff Hammond and I will be here throughout the day with analysis and observation. Some of the things we'll be keeping an eye on. Will Dale Earnhardt Jr., four feet at Talladega? Can Jeremy Mayfield win from the pole position? Will there be another one of Talladega's multi-car pileups known as the big one? The answer's 500 miles ahead as the drivers are ready to roll. NASCAR on Fox coming to you from Talladega, Sweet Home, Alabama. Number 99 Aaron's Dream Machine means a lot to me. It's a great car that represents a great company. It stands for the fact that for just $99 a month, you can own an Aaron's Dream product. So do the math. You'll own it sooner and for less money when you shop at Aaron's. Dream products at dream prices? Now, I like that. Yeah. So let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. Now, let's do my math. Driving plus Dream Machine equals DW. You just won't quit, will you? Tom, I told this guy you make a great sandwich. Tell him. Well, I start with a rich blend of savory Monterey and cheddar cheeses. Then add flavorful herbs like garlic, dash of oregano, a pinch of rosemary. Sounds like a great sandwich. Sandwich? That was just the bread. Great bread makes a delicious sandwich. That's why Subway has a line of gourmet breads like the tasty new Italian herb and cheese. Fresh baked with garlic, oregano, rosemary, topped with Monterey Jack and cheddar cheeses. Ready to hear more? I think I'm ready to eat. Subway! Recently, all the winners of the Car and Driver Best Pickup Award got together for a little reunion. It's good to see everyone again. Silverado, the three-time winner, the only winner of Car and Driver's Best Pickup Award. Silverado, the truck from Chevy. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Jeff Gordon. Mm, I just love the way he gets in his car. Oh, that's smooth. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Welcomes you to Talladega Super Speedway and the Aaron's 499, the spring race for the Winston Cup cars at the fastest speedway on earth. The cars roll out for their first of three pace laps. Big crowd, nice card show on the back stretch. Over 150,000 here, ready to go racing. I'm Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds, the winning crew chief here in 1992, and Darrell Waltrip, a four-time Talladega winner. Larry, strategy and pit selection a lot different than at the shorter tracks here. I mean, it is. I mean, it's his job and the spotter's job to stay out of that big one, the eye of the storm. But, yeah, a lot of different strategies. I know it's a 500-mile race, but with those 13-and-a-half-gallon fuel cells like you saw Jeff Hammond with in the pre-race, a lot of things evolves around that. Teams trying to figure out how they can make this race on four stops. Even pit selection. I talked to one team that picked a pit at the entrance of pit road. That way, if they run out of fuel, they don't have that far to go when they get on the pit road to get fuel into that car. Daryl, probably nobody can stay up front all day in this race for 499 miles, but is this a matter of being good or a matter of being good and lucky? Well, which, it's like a dance. I mean, we're going to waltz around in here with all these cars, and everybody's going to be on the same page, and as long as you don't step on somebody's toes, everything will be fine. 
But that's what you got to be careful of, is not to get out of step, get into somebody, and cause that dreaded big one. The other thing is getting on the pit road. The driver's going to have a tough time not locking up that right front tire, flat spot in that right, right front tire. So that's a big responsibility for the driver as well. Last year, the big one caused by driver error. Yesterday in the Bush race, the big one caused by a mechanical failure. It's a matter of playing dodge em for 500 miles here at Talladega. Ask any woman why she fell for a man, and chances are she won't say looks, which gave us an idea. On April 21st, one woman will search for true love from a field of 20 eligible men. When you meet them, they'll look like this. When she sees them, you'll be a little less revealing. But once she's chosen Mr. Right, will her love last when the mask comes off? Things could get ugly on the new reality series, Mr. Personality, coming Monday, April 21st to Fox. NASCAR's on the track. Odds are, so is Track Pass. Just log on to America Online or go to NASCAR.com and get Track Pass. NASCAR.com. America Online. Keyword NASCAR. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. The entire world of extreme sports all in one place. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Hey, bowlers. you got to be in it to win it. That's the Lilac City Bowling Tournament in Rochester, New York. 23 ways to cash for amateur bowlers. Men's team, ladies team, ladies, get your men and bowl in the mixed team. Doubles and singles available in all divisions. Over $1 million paid annually. But you got to be in it to win it. Call us, 1-800-36-LILAC, or visit us on the web. You got to be in it to win it. Rich and powerful insurance companies often attempt to severely limit the rights of accident victims. When they are successful, the cost of the victim's disability and rehabilitation falls upon all of us, the taxpayers. If you are ever injured, your choice of law firms is critical. By successfully fighting for our clients against insurance companies, Salino & Barnes has become one of America's largest personal injury firms. Call us. We'd be honored to fight for you. There is a war coming, one that is going to make this battle look like child's play. And the whole world, Andromeda. Tonight at 6, brought to you by The Steel Source. America's pastime returns to Fox. We need a car? A sports car! A wagon. Silver! And certified pre-owned. That one. Autotrader.com lets you compare 2.1 million new, used, and certified pre-owned cars to find the one you want. Oh, now we gotta sell our car. I need a car! Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. My dad taught me two simple rules about car care. To take care of the engine, change the oil. To take care of the fuel system, add STP. When your dad is Richard Petty, you tend to listen. Mark and Karen have twins. They use their Discover card because it pays them for the things they buy. So far, they've earned a cash-back bonus award of $140. It's money they use to pay for a special night out. And an emergency 24-pack. Discover card. Why not get paid for the things you buy anyway? Good afternoon. I'm Ken Butler. I'm president of Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. And on behalf of our 750 stores nationwide, I want to welcome you to Talladega Motor Speedway, home of the Aaron's 499, where we drive your dreams home for $99 a month. Today marks a very special day in that Hermie Sadler will be driving the Aaron's Dream Machine 2, as in number 02, but he's not only driving from Aaron's, he's driving for the Autism Society of America. So keep an eye on him, help her raise awareness for autism, sit back, enjoy the race, have a good time. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR and proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each NASCAR Winston Cup race. This weekend's Bud Pole winner, Jeremy Mayfield, his seventh career pole. 
Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $8 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award Program. They have moved the start of this race up due to thunderstorms, which we expect about 3 o'clock Central Time. So here's the Prestone starting grid. We'll rip right through it. But up in that top 10, you see four Dodges, four Chevrolets, a couple of Fords. There you see Dale Earnhardt Jr. heard him say a while ago he has to drop to the rear of the field because of an engine change. Also, Bobby Labonte in the 18 car, Jeff Green in the 30 car, and Mike Skinner in the 4 car, all going to the rear of the field because of engine changes. We'll keep you posted, though, based on our score monitor. Trust me, the way they're running right now, that's not the way they'll be running when they cross that start-finish line to complete lap one. Now, three drivers failed to qualify. Brett Bodine was one. Larry Foyt and David Green's runs were disqualified. David Green was fast enough to make the top 36, but the car was too low in the back, as was Foyt's. And several cars go to the back due to engine changes, as Larry noted. These uh, restrictor plate engines are real temperamental. They're temperamental little boogers, and you, uh, they'll give you a problem if you don't. You've got to take care of them. You can't abuse them. Today, 499 miles. It's the shortest 500-mile race on the tour. <laughs> It'll take 188 laps to run. And the pit window with these smaller fuel cells, Larry? Right here. We'll be talking about this a lot today. Trust me, that 35 to 40 laps, we won't be talking a lot about tires, but we will be talking a lot about the fuel strategy. I think it's time. <laughs> Yeah, I see them coming. <laughs> Watch the start-finish line here at Talladega, not in the middle of the trial. We're all the way down, headed toward turn one, DW. One more time, reach up there and pull those seat belts tight. Everybody's on their feet. Let's go racing, boys. Boogity, boogity, boogity! It'll take about a lap for these engines to get wound up with that 7-H restrictor plate. Take about a lap for that to happen, but it won't take long for them to get about five feet back through there. No preferred groove of racing here. The preferred groove is the line that's moving, whether it's the inside or the outside line, Darrell. This looks very orderly for a first lap at Talladega. Give them a little time. I don't know. Maybe they got some kind of, had some kind of message in the driver's meeting today that we don't know about. Uh, the guys did see what happened yesterday on the 10th lap, so they're being a little uh, on the on the cautious side, I guess. Tommy Sadler was way up there, three wide, and Mayfield. First time he's let, well, he led a lap here in the fall race last year, and that was the last lap he's led in Winston Cup racing. He's out front in lap one. Darrell looks like that inside line right now is the line that's moving. Riding with Jeff Gordon. Oh man, there's a somebody way up on the outside. It looked like Rusty back there, just squeezing between in the wall. You heard the pitch of those engines never changing. They are wide open all the way around this 2.66 mile track. Rusty Wallace had Greg Biffle up alongside, and that clogged things up at that point. Well, the Airhand cars, the two Dodges of uh, Elliott and, and the pole setter there, Mayfield, along with uh, Ryan Newman and Rusty Wallace, they were the fastest cars in practice. Casey Mears, the target car outside of Ricky Craven and Michael Waltrip. Mirror's gonna drift back a little bit here. Normally, Darrell, you don't like to be in the middle, but look like Ricky Craven in the Tide 32 car. He had a pretty good line of cars with him. What you wanna do is go up through the middle, get as far as you can, but then you gotta find a line because if you don't, you'll go right to the back again. The middle's good for passing and moving up, but you can't stay there. Rusty Wallace, number two, trying to drag a group of cars up way on the outside. I always like to call that middle the sucker hole. It looks good, baby. It's nobody there, and you just think you're going on, but it's like you hit a roadblock up to there. Told you we promised we'd talk about this. There's 43 cars out there. That last lap, all, all but five cars changed positions. Wow. See the guy in the middle there? See how the guy's on the outside? Now, he'll go forward as he get on the straightaway, but then when he gets to the corner, he'll fall back again. Now, we talk, just like we saw yesterday, you, you worry about a driver mistake, a mental error. 
But yesterday we saw a mechanical problem that caused the big one. Right. Johnny Sauter running fourth, cut down a tire. Treble, turn one. Hard, a car in the wall. And spinning down to the bottom. It's going to be 10 or more cars involved. Johnny Benson. Lap four. Here they come to the flag, and everybody pretty much out of the throttle. Mayhem in turn one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. I want to check. He may have been involved in that. There he is right there. I think he made it. He was so far in the back, Larry. I think he made it through okay. A little bit of damage to his left front. There you see Ryan Newman in the 12 car. Casey Mears, the nose of his Dodge torn up as well. And Hermie Sadler has crashed out of this race. No dreams today for Hermie. This was his very first restrictor plate race start, Hermie. Jeff Burton on the right, Casey Mears on the left. Darrell, there was contact and one car shot up. Hard hit to the outside wall. Flames erupted and everybody piled in. Well, let's see if we can got an idea about what happens here. Darrell, I believe the 12 car, Ryan Newman, looks like he was out of shape, maybe starting to get loose by himself. And Newman almost flipped over. Remember, he had that hard crash at Daytona where he got on his roof at uh, I back in February. I can't imagine that uh, there wasn't some, some sort of contact that started that, because that looked so violent. Man, that car was almost over its on its top right there. It hit that wall a ton. Rusty Wallace, his teammate, the two cars involved. As they come through, watch for the last two cars, which I believe, uh, there's Earnhardt Jr. up high getting through with Schrader and Tony Raines. Jr. and Raines are the last two to get through from Rusty Wallace. Ryan Newman's tire right there bouncing over the fence. There's Dale Jr. right there. Look at him. I think he got just a little bit of damage on that left front. Let's ride with Dale Jr. Yeah, right there he got in the back of the 30 car. Can't see a thing. Look at that. And this is the camera, but remember, he's seeing the same thing out that windshield. Except his windshield doesn't clear like this one. Schrader got into the side of him a little bit, and he got a little damage to the front when he got in the back of the 30 car, but otherwise I think he's going to be all right. I, I'm not so sure that Mark Martin in the, in the 12 car didn't make some contact. Man. Tire went completely over the fence, outside the racetrack. Yeah. Did the Jimmy Horton. Matt Yoakum. Mike, over the past 45 to 50 seconds, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been talking on the radio, diagnosing the cosmetic damage to the car. He said he got into the back of the 30, which you saw in our video. There is damage to the left front bottom fascia. They've got a piece of aluminum already cut to do some work. He also said he got into the 49 of Ken Schrader, not sure about the right side or the rear. They're going to change the tires because he flat spotted them by locking them up. As Phil drives trying to work on that left front corner, they're beating it out. Now he's got the hammer. Not as bad as they thought by listening to him on the radio or watching the video. But remember, aerodynamics so important. But remember back to Daytona two years ago where he lost the whole right front fender. They replaced it, and he was just as fast or faster. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal here. But aerodynamics so important as they are cutting another piece of aluminum here to work on that front corner. Let's have a look from Matt. Matt Kenseth, a lot of damage there. And Mike, the good thing about these guys working on their cars on pit road, the pace cars running 70 miles an hour, but it takes almost three minutes to get around this racetrack. And when you're working on a race car, that don't seem like long, but that's a lot more than anywhere else we go. Tony Stewart with a little damage. Here's Steve. And Mike, Mark Martin assessing the damage to the rear end of the number six Viagra car. Mark, what happened? Uh, the 12 car had a tire go down uh, right rear. And, uh, golly, I tell you, this Viagra team just, <laughs> I tell you, I can't believe it. 
Uh, we just we just can't get on a roll, you know. We run so good on the racetrack, and and uh, man, we've just been really up against. Uh, uh, we had a lot of good luck, I guess, last year, but boy, it's sure coming back to honest this year. Mark, there's a lot of damage. Can you get the race car back out there? Yeah, we'll get back out there, but it sure ain't gonna be pretty. You know, uh, our our day is wasted, and um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm disappointed. We we had a reasonable car, and uh, nothing was going on there, and and uh, there was nothing that anybody could. You know, I was just in the right spot to be in a wreck. The 12 car had a looked like a right rear or a left rear uh, go down, and he crossed up and there was no way to do anything you know there was no way to avoid it thanks mark 26 cars in all ricky rudds among them involved in this accident in turn one let's ride with ricky rudd Kurt Busch is the only one that was not involved in that wreck. And remember, that's at 190 miles an hour. Hermie Sadler, Day and Zerlin. Six laps complete, and the errands 499. Good luck, Mikey. Some people will do anything to live their dreams. Aaron's makes dreams come true for the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease. Do the math. Daryl, we did the math on this. Two drivers, one car equals no chance, brother. Could I have my helmet, please? Pizza! In my family, if one wants pizza, the other wants Chinese. Even their stomachs don't agree. If one gets indigestion, the other one gets heartburn. If one gets nausea, the other one gets... So I get Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. Now this here, that's the drain plug. It lets the oil drain out into the pan. Remember, she's got a lot of mileage on her, but one day, she'll be all yours. <laughs> Help keep the family car in the family with Valvoline's Max Life. Max Life, the first motor oil specially formulated to recondition used seals to help prevent leaks, helping your higher mileage engine run for a long, long time. After our naps, we'll flush the radiator. Now there's an entire line of Max Life products that'll help keep your higher mileage car around for a long time. To a driver, fear isn't going full wide into a turn. Fear isn't driving into a cloud of smoke at 200 miles per hour. Fear's not getting sideways an inch from the wall. That's because Ford dominated, dominated, dominated last year's Cup Series with seven Fords finishing in the top ten. Top ten. Seven Fords. So fear in the racing world is looking in the rearview mirror and seeing one of us. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. There's nothing like a good chicken sandwich, and pretty soon you'll be making sandwiches for me. Come on to my house, my house will come on. When you make butter, not a sauce. You gotta have red, ripe tomatoes with mozzarella. Oh, bellissima. Back for a limited time, the Italian chicken sandwich at Burger King. Crispy all-white meat chicken, rich marinara sauce, and mozzarella cheese. Or have it your way and choose the original chicken sandwich only at Burger King. Come on to my house. Ten grand. Let's see some red, honey. Let it rip. John Corbett is lucky. An FX original series yeah. premieres this week only on FX. Check your local listings. Ah, yeah. The Angels World Champions. America's pastime returns to Fox. Welcome back to Talladega, where Rusty Wallace's car gets the long, slow ride back to the garage area. One of 26 cars involved. There is the car Look at that, that triggered it. Yeah, and the left front wheel, that's what we saw go over the wall. That's, it's ripped right off of that car. It wasn't the right rear. It must have been the left rear that he had problem with. Yesterday, in the Aaron's 312, on the 10th lap of the race, the fourth place car, right there, Johnny Sauter, cuts down a tire, goes to the apron, and back up, and the track just clogs.
In today's crash, it's Ryan Newman who has see, a problem. See him get a little bit loose there as he goes down into one, and then he gets real loose again and gets down into Mark Martin. And uh, that sets this whole deal off. And boy, that 12 was, when the wheel came off of it, that's what caused it to almost go over, dug into the racetrack. Two cars almost got through. Here comes Bobby Labonte from the right side of your screen. Here comes Bobby. He's going to miss it. He's going to miss it. He's going to miss it. No, he's not. Couldn't do it. And then the other guy, here's Dale Jr. right here coming down through there. Uh, and he's been all over the place, made a little contact, not a lot. And he is going to miss it. He yeah, makes he, it through. I think he missed it completely here. The damage he got was when he got in the back of Jeff Greenway back over in turn one. He was far enough back that he didn't get run over from behind. Here is the first page of cars involved in the crash, which uh, now total 27. And these are in numerical order. And there are the rest. Let's go to Steve Burns. And Mike is a swarm of mechanics working on Jamie McMurray's battered race car. Jamie, first of all, are you okay? Tell us what happened. Yeah, I didn't really take that hard of a hit. I just, um, I saw the 12 car get out of control, and I didn't know if someone ran into him or what happened, but, um, you know, he, he came up the racetrack when I got on the brakes. Whoever was behind me ran into me, and then it just kind of a chain reaction, but we didn't really get hit that hard. I'm hoping we can get the Haviland Dodge back on the racetrack. All right, best of luck. Let's go to Jeannie. With Jeff Green, can you take us through what happened from your vantage point? Well, I couldn't tell you, Jeannie, what happened until they said uh, 12 might have blown a tire or something. And, you know, unfortunately, we have to race four races like this. Um, half the field's going to be, you know, a lot of cars are in the garage area, so how good a race is that going to be for the fans? And I know it's a, a fantastic race to watch, but for us, it's pretty, pretty, pretty exciting and pretty mentally draining. And we, it's just tough to get, you know, we've, I hadn't had a good weekend for our oil Chevy yet uh, down here. This weekend's been pretty, pretty bad for us. So hopefully we can get away from here and go to Martinsville and try to win a race. What could make this better? Uh, <laughs> a weekend off. How about that? Oh, fair enough. You feel good. 27 cars in the crash. 17 of them are in the garage right now, including Hermie Sadler's. Let's ride with Johnny Benson. Looking back at his teammate, Jerry Nadu. Let's ride with Nadu then. Johnny Benson just ahead of him. And the view from Winston Cup champion Tony Stewart. walking you're doing okay word is that you cut a tire is, is that what you know it went down I don't know if it blew or what but it, uh, it cut a tire and then I got loose and then I got hit and then that was it are you doing okay I could be better don't you think I guess so I just want to know you're healthy all drivers involved taken to the care center for a checkup and released that's the good news the bad news is that 17 cars right now are in the garage area and more are on pit road under repair Jeff Gordon. Mm. I just love the way he gets in his car. Oh, that's smooth. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Haviland 500 and checking the Haviland running order. The Haviland 42 cars moving up. Yeah, boy, take a look at that Haviland Speedo and Haviland Tack on McMurray's ride. Let's time this lap with a Haviland stopwatch. That Haviland temperature gauge says his engine's running good. It's time to pay some bills. Folks, this race is brought to you by, uh... Haviland Motor Oil. Yep, now back to racing. I tell you what, it's easy to see why Jamie's doing so well. And thanks for these beautiful overhead shots from the Haviland Blimps. Good in the 
is razor burn ruining your morning? The Extreme 3 from Schick balances three blades on a central pivot for a close, comfortable shave. The Extreme 3. Get close, not burned. For three months, I'm the invisible man. I'm an accountant. From January to April, you can't see me, can't talk to me. I don't have time to talk on my cell phone. I don't even have time to talk to myself. You need Singular's Rollover. Unused many time minutes roll over from month to month. Plus, choose 5,000 night and weekend minutes or 5,000 mobile to mobile minutes. And you can get a free phone, too. I call it the Kevin McCorkle Taxes Should Be This Fair plan. Come into Singular now to find the plan that fits you best. What? For that long road to maturity, <laughs> we'll be there. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Chevrolet. Wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. By Valvoline's Max Life, formulated to keep your higher mileage car running for a long, long time. And by Pepsi-Cola, experience the joy of Pepsi. And welcome to this Visa race break from Talladega. Fox, glad to have you with us. Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel. We are under caution after the biggest one, 27, at least 27 cars involved. There were 24 last year in the wreck. Jeff Hammond is down at the cutaway car. In a moment, he'll explain and help us understand Ryan Newman's incident, which triggered this incident on lap four. Of course, you saw on Saturday in the Bush race, a big wreck as well. Watch the 12 car lose a tire. The tire flies over the wall. Later, Ryan Newman's car would uh, catch fire and 27 cars involved. Ryan Newman was last at the Talladega Spring Race last year. Remember, he finished last at Daytona this year. And there's a look at his car. And for uh, further explanation, uh, let's go down to Jeff Hammond at the Ford Cutaway car. Jeff? Thanks, Chris. We saw right there with Ryan Newman's car. The left front was literally ripped off that race car. Now, NASCAR has anticipated this. If you look right here, this is what has happened. This is the A-frame. This is the spindle assembly tie rod in. NASCAR requires everyone to have what they call a tether that helps to hold this wheel to the race car in the event of a serious accident. But you saw that impact right there. It literally sheared and ripped this tether apart along with the ball joints and sent that left front tire careening over the outside wall. That's the reason why the tethers are there. But if you also notice, when the car was being brought in, back here in the back, NASCAR also has tethers on the rear deck lid. A lot of times when you back into the wall, the deck lid can be ripped loose because it's only held on by a few hood pins and a couple places as far as the hinges are concerned. They've also put tethers on the rear deck lid. They've seen these parts of the car fly off before, and they've done everything they can to make sure they stay connected to the race car. Chris? Thanks, Jeff. This has been a, a Visa race break again. Last year, there were 24 cars involved in a uh, wreck that happened later in the race. And again, this just after lap four as Dale Earnhardt Jr. survived uh, that without too much damage, some minor damage, about 17 or 18 cars in front of uh, the accident which took place in the uh, previous wrecks at Talladega. We mentioned 24 involved last year. There were 21 cars involved in 73, 20 cars involved in a wreck back in 91. And in uh, 98, a wreck involving 20 cars, but 27 the most on record here at Talladega. Let's check in with the rookie Casey Mears. He's with our Steve Fern. Steve? Yeah, Chris, Casey and I just remarking all these expensive race cars and sophisticated equipment, and the tool of choice back here is a hammer. Casey, a lot of work going on to your car. Can you get back in there? Yeah, we're going to get back in. You know, the guys are working real hard at it right now. I hope nothing's wrong with the motor because we had a little problem with it on the way back trying to get it in. But, uh, you know, it's just a shame. I guess Ryan, my blue left rear tire, so there's nothing anybody can do about it. Um, just feel bad for the guys at the Target Dodge. I mean, uh, we worked real hard all year long. We've had some good runs, but just haven't got the results and thought we could have had a good one here today. Casey, did you see it unfold? Was there any way you could try to avoid it? No, I mean, you're just running so close here. I mean, it's just a matter of time when someone, you know, has a problem, you just get caught up in it. There's nowhere to go. I mean, you're stacked, you know, three wide and everybody's right up on you and you're right up on the next guy. And as soon as that happened, he went to the top. Everybody tried to do what they could. And I started to slow down and Rusty got in the back of me and then I got in the back of Jamie. You know, it's just, there's just nothing you can do. 
Thanks, Casey. Let's go to Jeannie. Well, I was just thinking that uh, Jeff Hammond's cutaway car probably has a lot more going on than your car right now, Jimmy Spencer. Hey, hey can I race Hammond's cutaway? <laughs> It's got a lot less damage in this, yeah. Just, uh, I mean, it was a bad deal, you know. Ryan uh, cut a tire down and sideways, and uh, nobody could miss him. And I'm just, thank the good Lord that nobody got hurt. You know, that's a big thing. Uh, Mongo spotted it. Look out, look out, go high. And I didn't listen to him. Uh, I, I went down low, and uh, I, I don't think I could have missed it high or low. And Mongo's mad right now. Hopefully, uh, Daryl will do real well next Saturday for him at Martinsville. All right, someone let this dog out, and we'll get him back in. Guys? All right, thanks. Jimmy Spencer, who never forgets, would probably like to forget this wreck. Again, all drivers safe, no serious injuries. We're under caution, a lap away from going green on Fox. I mean, my haircut is nice, the dye job, yeah, it worked. Good. It's good, huh? Uh-huh. You charge the batteries, right? Yes. And I look good? Yeah. Hey, Dale. We're here for the interview. Oh, right, right. Where do y'all want to do it? You know, uh... Wherever you're most comfortable. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Introducing new cinnamon sticks from Pizza Hut. They're delicious and they're free when you buy a large pepperoni pizza for just $9.99. Get 10 luscious, freshly baked treats with cinnamon and sugar in every mouthwatering morsel free. Just order a large Pizza Hut pizza, piled high with pepperoni, just $9.99. And we'll sweeten the deal with 10 of our new cinnamon sticks free. Is that a sweet deal or what? At Pizza Hut. I've got to trust 100 people, if not more, that have all touched something on that race car. Teamwork is everything. You pull in on the pit road, second or third, Guys are singing lug nuts off and on. You're going to be the first one off pit road, and that's what separates the best from the rest. Show our troops a sign of your support. Write them a message on one of the world's largest thank you cards. Visit any Lowe's store to show your power of pride. You know, Kenny, thanks to you and Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner, I've made some great new friends in racing. Last night, Jeff Hammond took me to a movie. I guess you didn't take your Stacker 2 today, did you? But nobody compares to my new best friend, Tony Stewart. Hey, Big Show. There's room for one more. Yeah. <laughs> Wait! Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. Stack or two of Bedger Free. Because you never know when you're going to need it. Who Wait, said Kenny can't run fast? Back. Okay, sweetie. Bye-bye. Can you check on my flight, please? Sure. Call team. Hey, Vanessa, have you finished my brother's birthday card yet? Have now. Now at Radio Shack, get this PCS Vision-enabled color screen phone from Sprint, just $49.99 after $130 in instant savings. Or a Fujifilm digital camera, just $199.99, plus a free photo accessory kit after mail-in rebate. How do you always have the answers to everybody's questions? Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. They've just waved the green flag to restart the Aaron's $499 at Talladega. Single file restart, 26 of the 43 starters are on track to take the restart green flag. Kevin Harvick, Michael Waltrip, Jimmy Johnson, after pit stops and repairs, they lead the pack as they come down the back straightaway. Goodyear engineers had a look at the tire that went down on Ryan Newman's car and report that there was evidence of that tire suffering a cut. It was not a blowout. It was a cut tire that caused the crash in turn one that involved 27 cars. And when that wheel and tire went over the fence, that is a non-spectator area. The wheel landed harmlessly at the bottom of the banking. NASCAR officials have retrieved it. Nobody hurt. This is the thing that always amazes me about the drivers. I just saw what happened down there. They go right back to it. Three, four wide, racing, pushing, bumping, just like nothing ever happened. Our Paul sitter, Jeremy Mayfield, had fallen to 16th. Now he's dropped back to 19th, Dick Bergeron. He came in for a pit stop under that caution flag, Mike. They put four tires and fuel in it. His car owner, Ray Evernham, told Mayfield it's all about momentum and urged him to exercise patience. The 97 of Kirch to be sticking with him. But, Dick, one reason I think that Jeremy Mayfield elected to pit, we talked about this in the beginning of the race, especially the Dodges. They're just not getting that good of fuel mileage. By them coming in there on those...
caution laps. That gives them a little bit of a cushion to make this on four stops. And Darrell, with as few cars as out there now, we could have some long green runs now. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, the strategy has changed dramatically uh, based on what happened. Kevin Harvick, your leader who had such a strong run in the Daytona 500. Here's Steve Burns. And Rusty Wallace here. Now, Rusty, you are parked right next to your teammate Ryan Newman. Have you looked at the tire? Yeah, I looked at it. It looks like he went into turn one. He, the car got real sideways up off of turn four with him, and he got down into one, and uh, it blew the left rear tire right off it, run over a piece of debris, and when it turned sideways, it took the whole field with him. But nothing to do with Talladega racing. It's just one of those racing accidents. When the tire went down, that was the problem. Can you get back in, Rusty? Yeah, we're patching them back together right now. I think it's a big race in the garage area to who can get back out and get a couple points because what is there's 20 of us inside here, I think, right now. Right, thanks, Rusty. Let's go to Jeannie. With Kenny Schrader. And uh, on the subject of tires, I think you have one here that you probably should not use anymore, sir. Got a lot of parts that we probably won't use again anymore, but uh, just hate to see it. Uh, you know, <laughs> We thought we'd make it through, but you got that option when you start in the back. But there uh, wasn't a whole lot we could do. Everybody's okay, at least. Absolutely. Glad to see that. Matt? Well, the eight car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. made seven stops. Tony Urey Jr., what's the state of the race car now? Uh, it should be pretty good now. I mean, uh, we just busted the metal to the fiberglass nose apart there, and we put a piece of aluminum over it to take care of that. But uh, I think we just want to make sure all the, line, all the wheels were in line, make sure everything was perfect because uh, the aerodynamic is so much here. And uh, we're planning on leading this thing here in a couple laps, so we just want to make sure it would be able to lead there. Should be good. The crowd comes to their feet as Junior moves to the outside, alongside and past Tony Stewart, and trying to move toward the front. Darrell, I think that car is okay. He pretty much made that pass without any help. He, he, he just amazes me, though, the car does, that he just pulls out and passes people at will. I'm going to tell you what, I want to give a call to that guy up there in the fifth place right now. Tony Reigns a 74 car. He started dead last. He did have the fastest lap in practice yesterday, but, I mean, this he dodged the big wreck. He was far enough back that he was able to get through it. See that race car? No sponsorship. These guys need a good run here today. Yeah, Mr. Bumgarner, is, he's putting that whole thing right up his own pocket. And, of course, Larry Carter, you know, used to be my crew chief, and they're running pretty darn good down here this weekend. Seems every time there's a big one at Talladega, there's a Cinderella story. In the last year in the Bush race, Tim Fidoa, didn't have a car to run to the finish, but after the big wreck happened, they stayed out, finished third, had a well, great race. As unlucky as Dale Jr. was at Daytona, where he had a mechanical problem that kept him probably from winning or a shot at winning a Daytona 500. Here he has an engine problem, has to go to the rear of the field. That could have saved him from being in the middle of that big wreck down there. Good point, because he would have started, what, 15th or so, and would have been right in the middle of it. As you ride with Robbie Gordon, time for our singular wireless virtual crew chief question. You can vote now from your singular wireless phone by sending text, text message FOX, F-O-X, to phone number 191, or visit foxsports.com to vote online. Now, you just think about it. When there were 43 cars out there, the track seemed like it was awfully crowded. <laughs> now it's just a little small group of guys having a Sunday afternoon race here. There are 26 cars on track. Four cars have been withdrawn from the race. Ryan Newman, Johnny Benson, Ricky Rudd, and Hermie Sadler. The rest of those cars are still in the garage area under repair. I tell you what, that's a pretty good group that's got together there on the top side. And Kenny Wallace saw that group coming in the 23 car. He moved up to the high side, but he has Sterling Marlin in the 40, Joe Nemechek in the 25, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car, and they are coming now. Yeah, you know, even yesterday, we saw some cars with damage. Now, if you bang the sides in, uh, and you don't hurt the nose or the tail, that's a good thing. You get those sides pushed in out of the way. It just creates less drag. So you can take a damaged car, especially running in a draft, and uh, still run just fine. Let's see Greg Biffle in the 16 car. We know he was involved in that wreck. He He's moving forward like his car was at the beginning of the race. No damage whatsoever. Here comes Michael for the lead. Kevin Harvick is going to surrender the lead. Michael Waltrip puts his nose out front. And he had, you know, yesterday Michael was just in front of that big wreck. They went right across the back behind his car. And uh, today he missed it again. So he's been to the luck bank. Has no help back at two. He got Kenny the 23 Wallace, the, the 23. The and right now, Kevin Harvick, the 29 car, Darrell, you call it the sucker hole. He's in the middle with no help. Boy, it feels good. Man, you jump out there, you say, man, look at this. I'm going to pass everybody. Rock, roll. Dale Jr. on the move, pulling up alongside Kenny Wallace. And here comes Greg Biffle with him. 
I mean, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has moved from last after that engine change to third in 20 laps, plus went through a wreck in 11 pit stops. I think that old race, race car's pretty good, Daryl. Yeah, he's just sitting there. Uh, he's probably, he may follow these guys for a lap or two, but I doubt it. Two of the damaged cars have returned to the racetrack, John Andretti and Dave Blaney. But there are still 16 cars in the garage. Just like mom. Um, you gotta see this. Now we can. PCS vision from Sprint, you could do more. Like take, send, and receive full color pictures right on your phone on the largest enhanced nationwide PCS network. You see, doesn't it look like her? Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Bon appetit. Hi, I can't. PCS vision from Sprint. Clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. Come on, Mikey. If the dream machine was my car, I'd let you drive it. But it isn't, and we've been over this time and time again. Can't we just watch a little TV? My buddy, Mike Watchos, let me drive the Aaron's dream machine. I am jacked up. Bring the kids, bring the... Uh -uh. How about some nachos, DW? How about this Terry Bradshaw deal? Do the math. The deal is you'll own merchandise faster and for less money when you shop at Aaron's. Any other drivers you want to tell me about, Michael? Michael. Jalapenos, D? So this is the living room, plasma TV. The awesome sound system! Toast. The hot tub. The grill. Oh, yeah. Did I mention the driveway? Check out Visa.com to learn how you and three friends could win the ultimate NASCAR experience. Stay in a luxury RV, get a hot lap with Rusty Wallace or Kurt Busch, and tour the pits. Visa, if you love NASCAR... These are my neighbors. They're kind of noisy. It's everywhere you want to be. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of NASCAR. Waltrip leads. Dale Jr. coming up the outside like nobody else is home. And Jimmy Johnson looking in the mirror for some help from his teammate, Jeff Gordon. Michael moved over there, thought about going all the way up there and helping Jr., but that wouldn't have been a very good idea, so he dropped back down. Well, I tell you, how about those two teammates right there? Matt Kenseth in the 17, Greg Biffle in the 16 on the outside. Remember, that's two cars that was involved in the wreck. Look at all the tape on the front end, and they're sitting there running third and fourth side by side. Larry, how many times have we said when you wreck one like that, you fix it better than it was before you wrecked it? Because <laughs> you don't have to go through tech right now. But nose to tail on the inside behind Michael Waltrip are Roush teammates. Matt Kenseth, the Winston Cup point leader, and Kurt Busch. And they were right up in the thick of things at Daytona. Looks a lot like the front of the field at Daytona, as a matter of fact, with Michael and uh, the 48 car there, Jimmy Johnson. And right behind Bush, that yellow car, Steve Park, was up there, and he was the fastest qualified of the three DEI cars. Looks like they've really put a big effort into Park's car this weekend, Mike. He's qualified better. He's running pretty well. He's good in practice. I think they're really trying to help him turn himself around here, his program around. He was at Marksville last week testing for next week. A lot of emphasis right now. Now on the outside, Jimmy Johnson has drifted back, probably not on purpose, but he's drifted back to pick up Jeff Gordon. So the two Hendrick teammates on the outside nose to tail. The cat car wore Burton right behind them. I tell you, I look at teammates Kenny Wallace in the 23, Ward Burton in the 22. That's two guys that could stand a good run here today.
Boy, Park's got, uh, I guess that's tape flopping around there, Larry. There's a lot of tape out there on that racetrack right now. I didn't really know that he had any significant damage to his car, so I'm not sure what that... Maybe they're trying to hold that side window in or something. They may have had one of those ducts taped up and the tape has come loose on, their, on the quarter window. Good chance. Lower speeds has much or more contact. Next Sunday at Martinsville, Virginia, the little short track south of Roanoke that thinks it's a super speedway. We'll be there for you. Dick Bergeron. Well, good catch on Steve Park. Indeed, the spotter had caught the tape that had flown loose on that automobile, and they are going to fix it on the next pit stop. Good observation up there in the booth. Well, I tell you, Dick, at the speeds these cars are running, it's amazing sometimes the way these cars can be affected, even by just some tape flapping in the breeze on the quarter window. Well, not great observation. <laughs> Look great at Greg, Biff work. Greg great. Biffle's car, though. It, I, I'm amazed. I mean, the front of that thing is taped up. It has gashes Boy, in it, bent that, up. That right there, though, is treacherous. You see how Park got in there on the outside of Biffle, and then the uh, 48 help car. help with you. Park's going to lose here. Just keep coming. 48 car got in there, and he was wobbling and bobbling around there. That's that's when you get in trouble. You get behind on your steering here, the thing will jump out front of you. Four wide through the trioval. Way up on the outside, Kevin Harvick. And Jimmy Johnson comes up to pick up Harvick on the outside. And you're going to see here C3 and 4 wide like we're amazed. This racetrack is plenty wide for that many cars. But the fact is, Daryl just mentioned, these cars bouncing around, it's hard to control sometimes. That's how they get in trouble. Jeff Gordon had a run. And Kurt Busch all but pushing his teammate. That's, ca track. that's casual contact. <laughs> you saw Kurt Busch. He, he dipped below that yellow line. That's the yeah. out-of-bounds line. But he, he didn't advance as his position. As long as you don't yeah. advance from his, your position. And there's tape flapping on Dale Jr.'s car. That's a piece of aluminum or maybe a big piece of that tape that they put on. That's aluminum. And that's the repair they made after yeah. that wreck. He'll, he'll uh, either have to get rid of that in a hurry or they'll bring him to pit road. Flapping on the left front there, guys. Aluminum piece coming off. Look at Park. Wow. He's up there on that outside, and here I come, baby. They're catching Dave Blaney, the 77 car right there. He was one of the cars in the wreck. They'll be putting him a lap down. Hey, I, I am really impressed with Park's car, how fast it is and how well it's running. He said yesterday in the happy hour show, he says, sometimes people forget there's three DEI cars. <laughs> he says, this weekend, I'm going to make them remember. Maybe it'll be the 24 car this weekend. No, there's already a 24 car. Let's see, that's 8 plus 15 plus, plus 1. one. Helps up <laughs> yeah. Now they have Deller and Hart Jr. in the eight car trapped on the outside. That hadn't made a difference, but maybe if that piece is hurting him, he's going to have a tough time getting back up there. It looks like it kind of whipped itself around there, and it's now kind of stabilized. Of course, it, if there's a hole there that it was covering up or some, something in the front nose there in the valence, uh, that could hurt the performance for sure. Yeah, he's falling back some there. I think... I know you need to keep it sometimes, sometimes NASCAR, and I don't know this, but sometimes they'll call you and say, look, you got a piece of metal loose. Get back. Get back out of that pack and uh, take a look at it and see what the problem is. Steve Park leads at 30 laps. Here's Matt. Well, Mike, remember back to Daytona, Steve Park had a very fast race car and then went twin 125 qualifier, but had an overheating problem. They estimated they spent over $100,000 trying about 20 different variations of duck work. They feel like they found out what the problem was. Richie Gilmore, the head engine builder, told me the park has the latest, greatest engine package that the entire DEI Armada will be running at Daytona in July. Dale Jr. had a different one today. Like a watch had a different one, but Park will have the latest and greatest today. And they feel like that's what the entire team, if all goes well, remember, it's not an R&D package. If they feel like this is the best package they've got. Well, we just think back to the last race here when Hendrick Motorsports had something new and fantastic and all five of the cars that had engines in them failed. So uh, they're going to probably take a look at this thing pretty close. It does run well. It's, no, it's pretty obvious. And what the ductwork is, that's the aluminum plenum that directs the air through the front end openings right through the radiator. And, and different noses take different configurations. And that's the curveball I think a lot of the Chevrolet teams or all these teams had at Daytona in February. Air is so critical. That's the big thing. And they're trying to manage it, what they're trying to do. Sterling Marlin has taken the lead in the Aaron's 499. see what all these guys have got now. There's no hole as far now, baby. You let it all hang out. Let the rough side drag. Daytona 
2003, Watchdale Jr. and Michael Waltrip dominate Speed Weeks. From testing qualifying the twin 125s and the Bud Shootout, it's all here on the way to the great American race. Order now on DVD or VHS at 1-800-856-4266 or online at smgcollections.com. Introducing the Zero Turning Radius Toro Time Cutter Z Mower. The most amazingly maneuverable Toro ever. Every Toro mower is guaranteed to start on the first or second pull, or we'll fix it free. Visit Eastview Power Products in Victor and Brighton Mower Service in Henrietta. Can you imagine me or any Buffalo Bill playing a game without a helmet? I can't. The same is true for our kids. They need to wear a bike helmet like this to stay safe. They need to protect themselves from injury. That's why we've teamed up with the Bills to bring you this important message. Wear your helmet, kids, and stay protected from injury when you ride your bike. Have fun and stay safe. Wear your helmet, a community service message from Salino and Barnes and the Buffalo Bills. Chase Pitkin announces the Spring Fever Door and Window Sale. Storm doors are easy to install, or we'll do it for you. This MI Storm Door is a terrific value, featuring a solid wood core. Self-storing window and screen, just $82. Beautify your home with an energy-efficient 9-light steel entry door unit, featuring double-pane insulating glass and magnetic weather stripping. $149. Spring savings? Always right at home at Chase Pitkin. Don't wait for the late news. Watch the 10 o'clock news on Fox Rochester. Exercise all race long. Log on to America Online or NASCAR.com and get track pads. NASCAR.com. America Online, keyword NASCAR. You made the matches, then these strangers got engaged. Now, with only two episodes left, the final two couples are planning their weddings. I think this is the one. <laughs> Who will say I do? None of them will know until they get to the altar. It's scaring me now, coming down to the reality of it all. And as the big day looms, some are ready to settle down. I've really fallen for him. While others have one last fling. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> An all-new Married by America at 9, 8 Central, Fox Monday. Caution flag waves for the second time at Talladega today at lap 36. Debris in the back straightaway will put us under the caution flag. And as they come around to caution, quickly let's update the accident cars. John Andretti never lost a lap. He's been out there at somewhat reduced speed, but he will stay on the lead lap. He will be the benefit from this caution, as will Greg Biffle. Dave Blaney was back in the race. And at seven laps down, Jerry Nadeau came out of the garage to run two laps and has retired his car. Jamie McMurray just returned to the race. And this caution will, Larry, save us obviously from having to make a pit stop under green, which was getting ready to happen here pretty quickly. And I saw Greg Biffle jump on pit road. That pit road is not open yet, so he'll have to go the tail end of the longest line on this restart. Steve? Yeah, Mike, we're listening to Greg Biffle talk to crew chief Randy Goss. They're having an overheating problem. Biffle's had to get out of line to cool the thing down. They think they have a problem with the radiator fan, and Greg also saying he thought he saw water squirting out from under the hood. Well, we can see it from here, Steve. They're losing a lot of water up there where the overflow hose is. I think they overtaped it, but remember now, he had a problem similar to this at uh, Bristol, and uh, they got water in the thing, got to cool down, and he come on home with the top five finish, so uh, he's still not out of the hunt trouble right now is if you want to raise that hood you got to peel back a lot of that tape yeah don't starters know. and i tell you who else this is a big break for as dale earnhardt jr had that piece flapping on his left front this will be a big break for him jeff hammond now if you'll notice the guy that's over on the driver's side they got a flap on the round cars right there where the roof i mean the uh, cow flaps are and they've got their cars fixed uh, mike so they don't have to raise the hood in the event of this they can flip that cow piece up and there's where the quick fill is so they can put water into their radiators Pretty uh, nifty little deal, if you ask me. That yes, it is. That, that is, is really is. neat. Now, we were then in about 10 laps of having to come to pit road for fuel with the small fuel cells, 13 half gallons. So we'll see all the leaders to pit road. I'm going to say some of them probably just roll the dice. Daryl just change those two right side tires, but definitely get full of fuel. Yeah, this might be a good time to stick four on it because you've been a lot of debris you've been flying around off these cars that are getting back out on the racetrack. Wouldn't want to take a chance, Jeannie. 
people that have been driving around the one car have told Steve Park that the spoiler is falling off the car, so that's something they're going to work on. A lot of debate when he was coming here from Tony Gibson whether we should just do the tires this time or what, but they have great concern again about the spoiler, so that's what they're going to work on. Dick? Kevin Harvick has just left his pit area. He has taken four tires and a load of fuel. He has been back and forth in the serial running order. The car is just fine. He said when people work with him, he does great. When he has to work alone, it does not. Matt? Well, the 48 car came in. Dick took on right side tires. No changes. The 24 car, right side tires as well. Now, the 8 car, they are going to fix the left front corner. You can see that piece of aluminum was flapping, so they are going to take the time and fix that. They were actually going to try to hold off and pit around lap 46 with the 24 car. Caution came at a good time. Did it? Hey, Matt, down here, Matt Kenseth's pit, they just took right side tires. A 17 car came in awfully hot. In fact, they had to back him up into his pit box. But again, right side tires for Matt Kenseth. Let's go to Jeannie. Well, Steve Park still in the pit as they are working on that spoiler. Indeed, it was starting to come off. One of the braces had come free. Again, they had plans to take four tires and fuel on this pit stop, but this spoiler is taking a lot of time. I mean, Jeannie, if you notice, the NASCAR officials are right there with them. Aside from the restrictor plate, the spoiler is the most critical thing that NASCAR monitors here. It cannot be lower than 55 degrees angle. They're going to make sure that spoiler is on there. We will not take a chance of coming off. The good thing for Steve Park's team is caution laps here take quite a while. Almost three minutes, so a lot of time to work on that thing. You see them still working feverishly here on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car, trying to make sure they get that left front corner back and that it don't come loose again. You know, you know, Larry, we had some big set, big uh, metal screws that we'd use in a case like that. It worked really good. Like you put mobile homes together. Right. Screw gun. Matt Kenseth came into the pits third. But had a little problem getting out because of the car that pitted in front of him. Now, he was over the line and had to get back, back up to get service. As long as you do that, there's no penalty. As long as you do it before your work starts, right. Steve. And he's back in, Steve. Yeah, he's back in. They're going to change left side tires this time, and they're going to put bare bond adhesive on the right side of the car to tape up that right front corner where they had damage. They're taking a razor blade now, cutting some excess away, and they're going to replace it again with some new bare bond. That Robbie Reiser led crew tops in the world championships, and here's the McDonald's drive through championship and how the participating teams in that standings are among the teams who spend the least amount of time on pit road each week. Okay, guys, get this bird put away and we're done for the day. With a new available Power Stroke Diesel, five-speed automatic torque shift transmission, and the most torque and horsepower of any diesel pickup, F-Series Super Duty goes way beyond just getting the job done. F-Series. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Tradition. A look on the other guy's face. To be my own Manning. Being a woman. Because last year, Millions of little girls. Every athlete is fueled by something. I know a little something about making good moves. Good move. Good move. So if you're thinking about Viagra, one of the best moves you can make is a pit stop to see your doctor. Ready to ask your doctor about Viagra for the first time? Find out if a free sample is right for you. Make your move. Talk to your doctor about Viagra today. To learn more, race over to Viagra.com. What's good? Sam? Subway's new Italian herb and cheese. The taste will bring you to your knees. Garlic, oregano, rosemary spice, fresh baked with Monterey and cheddar cheese is so nice. Great bread makes a sandwich a true taste delight. You'll see for yourself with just one bite. Step right up. No one makes them like Sam. Whether a BMT, meatball, or my favorite, ham. I told you he was the one to ask. Subway, eat fresh! 
Dale, I know you still don't want to race our truck, but you got to admit, the new logo makes it look a lot faster. Okay, you can roll the film, John. Look at that baby move. Look at that. It's nothing. Just wait till you see this. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. UPS delivers a chance to win four tickets to the Daytona 500. Log on to foxsports.com, keyword UPS Racing, to enter. Jimmy Johnson is our race leader at 39 laps, working the second caution of the day. This one for debris. We picked up this conversation with the Jimmy Johnson team. Chris, um, when, when I got the 24 behind me, maybe maybe let me know where that outside car is relative to the 24 because I can move up. Jeff's trying to follow me and I can move up then and he'll follow me and he won't get hung out like he did. You follow what I'm saying? That's it, four. There you see the Fox tracks in right there. Pace car dropping them off at about 70 miles per hour. That's the pace car speed around this racetrack. Of course, Jimmy Johnson talking about his teammate Jeff Gordon in the 24 car, just trying to form some strategy of what they can do on the racetrack. Let's see how fast they are by the time they reach the start-finish line going through the gearbox. Well over 100 miles an hour before they even get to the start-finish line. And as we go back to green, NASCAR would not allow Steve Park to return to the track until his spoiler was repaired, so he is two laps down. He's got his teammate back here with him as they come through the trial. Well, Dale Jr., he had to stay in there an extended period of time getting that left front worked on as well and they are way back behind the lead pack right now that's going to be the best thing they can do Daryl and hopefully catch a caution and sit there and run together because two cars will be much faster than one car by itself there, there were times here when we used to think hey let's five or six of us fall back off of that lead pack and run together and if we need to we can chase them down uh, we'll see how it works for these two guys because we know their cars are fast maybe they can chase that lead pack down well, we'll make a note. They are 14 seconds behind the leader when they came to the green flag. Now, they've knocked that down to 10 seconds. And I think as long as lead pack is slicing and dicing, they will be able to, to gain some ground on that pack as long as they're running side by side like this. Yeah, if they can get a few stragglers there, you know, to, to kind of get a little help off of as they come up through there, uh, they'll work their way back up there. They're fast enough. And Park is now Junior's wingman. I mean, he's two laps down. He's not in a position to win this race, but he's in a great position to help his teammate. How about Mike Wallace in that 09 car? After qualifying, he was the 37th qualifier. They were loading their car in the truck. When they disqualified David Green, they said, hey, unload your car. You're now the 36th qualifier. You're in the show. And here they are running in the top 10. Mike Wallace, 13th. You see the gap. It's only 1.3 seconds. Back he, of the leader, Jimmy Johnson. He drove that car to a top 10 finish at Daytona, too, so that's far as good. Has Ernie Elliott engines in it. This is the Jane Finch team that runs the one car with Jamie McMurray and David Stremme in the Bush Series. Whoa, and he just got a nerf from, Mike, uh, from uh, Tony Raines as they came past the start-finish line. Everything settled out, though. Well, you know that we always talk about bump drafting. There's a time and a place for that. But when the guy in front of you is in the turn or turning, that is not the time or the place. Need to be going in a straight line when you start doing that bumping. Riding with Kenny Wallace here in the 23 car running up there in second. You know, it, Mike, and you and I were talking about this the other day. It's almost like no matter what Kenny Wallace has been in here, he's always ran well here at Talladega. You know, you know why, Larry? He told me he learned a lot from Andy Petrie racing here. He drove Petrie's car. Petrie was one of the uh, first guys to come with that really 500-pound front springs and sucking the car down. And Kenny told me he learned a lot. And bump stops, he learned a lot of from uh, Andy Petrie. And a pretty sharp guy over there working on this car. You worked with him, Philippe Lopez. Yeah, Philippe. Chief. Philippe is a really sharp this track has produced a lot of first time winners in fact in the first 14 years of the fall race which was the Talladega 500 nobody won it twice and a lot of drivers Bobby Hillen comes to mind Richard Brickhouse Ron Bouchard got their first victory right here Lenny Pond Bill Parsons Bill Parsons and when I think about Kenny Wallace, though, who can ever forget two or three years ago, him and Dale Earnhardt working their way through the field, working together, coming from about 21st to 1st in about three or four laps. 
up through the middle. Jerry Nadeau is one of the cars that have come back from the garage back into the race. Add Todd Bodine and Mark Martin to that list. But you see Nadeau, uh, his rear spoiler has a bit of a problem. They black flagged him to work on that a little further. Jimmy Spencer in the seven car just came out, but Darrell, he went by us here. There's no front end on that race car. He'll never be able to maintain minimum speed, but if he can complete one lap, he will pick up quite a number of positions. There's Nadeau running with no hood. I mean, he's got about a half a car out there. <laughs> the army of one is down to a half. Dale Jarrett at 20th place got bumped by Tony Stewart in uh, the melee in turn one. Just got a little bit of damage to the rear of the car. There you and see he's about it. two seconds behind our leader right now. Jimmy Johnson watched the miles per hour just barely varies. Remember they're running around this racetrack wide open. You heard, Never the, engine, heard the engine change tunes just a little bit. He run up on the back of Jimmy Johnson had to ease out the throttle and you saw how quickly it affected the speed. Kenseth in the middle on Kevin Harvick. Ricky Craven, the 32 inside. Looks like Biffle got his car uh, cooled down. He's back up in there pushing and shoving a little bit. And how about Dale Jr.? He's hasn't gained much more ground, Jeff. 11.8 behind the leader. Well, right there at the very start of this restart, he was 14 seconds behind. He cut it down four seconds when everybody was kind of mixing it up on the second lap. But since then, he and his partner right there, Steve Park, slowly but surely lost ground to the leaders. They're losing almost four tenths to a half a second a lap right now, running like they are. They really need for these guys up front to start mixing it up if they want to close ground on these guys. They sure mixed it up just then. Greg Biffle and Robbie Gordon got together. The pack separated, and they went three wide with Gordon to the outside, three abreast. I think the biggest salvation Dale Earnhardt Jr. in particular would have would be a caution flag to get him caught back up. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it with that right there. Yeah, what, what he hopes is is some of that uh, tape and, and uh, sheet metal that's been taped back on those cars will fly off and they'll have a debris caution. More on Dale Jr. Here's Matt. Mike, he was just relaying to his spotter Ty Norris to tell Steve Park's starter Stevie Reeves to run on the bottom. If we're going to catch him, we need to be on the bottom. They're relaying that message. That's a good point. Take the short way around. Yeah, it's just, they're going to have to pick up quite a bit of speed before they can close up on this lead group up here. I tell you, I've been in a situation like this before. When that big pack up there is running together, you're a second slower. I don't care how many cars you get around you when you're that four back. 12 seconds back to Junior from the leader, Jimmy Johnson. Kenny Wallace the second, Kurt Busch third, Sterling Marlin and Jeremy Mayfield in the Aaron's 499 on Fox. What are you doing, Bobby? Making a reality show. Who wants to marry a tech? But he's already married. Shh, we don't reveal that until the last episode. Well, why are you filming him changing his auto light double platinum plugs? He always says nothing outperforms the platinum to platinum firing of an auto light plug. Part of what makes him a great catch. Auto light. It's time to change your plugs. Hey, how about voting somebody off the driveway? Papa John's. After 19 years, no question. It's an amazing pizza. Why is our original crust pizza made from fresh, hand-tossed dough? Why gourmet, maybe portobello mushrooms? Why 100% real cheese and sauce made from fine ripened tomatoes? Why? Because I said so. Celebrate Papa John's 19th anniversary. Get two large one-topping pizzas for just $11.99. Call us now. We'll be right there. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Right now at Sears, America's number one seller of mowers and tractors. Look for the lowest prices of the season on everything you need for spring, like select mowers, tractors, and garden <laughs> tools of all shapes and sizes, including Craftsman, America's number one brand. Just ask any associate. They'll help you find what you need to get your lawn and garden ready for spring. So look for the lowest prices of the season. Only at Sears. Where else? 
It's only two ugly people in the world, and your mama's both of them. You know, your mama's so fat, she stepped on the dollar and made change. <laughs> I heard your mama's so ugly, she robbed the bank with no gun, just stuck her head over the counter and said, Put that money in the bag. Stick <laughs> them up. Stick them up. <laughs> Timing was a little off. Oh, yeah. timing was a little off. Timing yeah. was uh, way off. You're Just not funny. Tell it over a great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. It's Miller time. <laughs> hey, thanks for taking me fishing, bro. It's my pleasure. You're not just buttering me up to drive the old Aaron's dream machine, are you? Of course not. So how you like your new tackle box? Oh, it's a beauty. You shouldn't have. Nothing's too good for you, Mikey. Do the math. When you compare prices and quality, you'll see nothing's too good for customers at Aaron's. More butter for your lobster, Mikey? Oh, no thanks. I'm good. You comfortable, buddy? Yeah, this recliner is great. Well, Aaron's had other colors, but this one matches the new boat perfectly. Pass the lemon, please. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Autolite Spark Plugs. It's time to change your plugs. By Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. And by Napa Auto Parts. 50 laps complete. Jimmy Johnson, the leader. Bobby Labonte has returned to the racetrack. That leaves 11 cars in the garage from the wreck on lap four. Some of them are going to have trouble keeping up to the minimum speed, though, I'm thinking, after a period of time here. You see Ricky Craven in that tied car, the 32 car. This is a good run for him. Remember, Cal Wells going to the Pontiac this year, creating his own engine program, but at the restricted plate racetrack, they use Richard Childress engines. I was up at Martinsville last week and watching him run, and he really looked good, Larry. He had a new car up there, and uh, looked like he had that Martinsville set up under that thing. Elliot Sadler running in seventh. He is driving for the team that finished third here last October with Ricky Rudd at the wheel. Here's Steve Burns. Well, Mike, if you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. That Ford of Elliott Sadler's came into pit after the most recent caution. He didn't take any tires. They just cleaned off the windshield and let him go back out there. He's remained near the front. Hey, last night he went to the NCAA Final Four semifinal games with his teammate Dale Jarrett. They were the guests of Texas coach. I'm oh, sorry, I just listened to the radio. They're guests of the Texas coach Rick Barnes. Unfortunately for Elliot Sadler, he picked Marquette to win it all, but they got back about 1 o'clock in the morning. They're going to hoop it up in Charlotte. Elliot Sadler is with a bunch of his Winston Cup pals. Yeah, I'm going to help him. I'm going to be a coach. I might play, but I'm more or less thinking I'm a coach. Possibly a playing coach. Okay. I'm always open, though. That's the thing. You can count on me. Have a little fun for charity. Here's Michael Waltrip in third, looking back at Ricky Craven in orange and Jeff Gordon in blue. You know, right now, Darrell, the way these cars are lined out there, I don't see a big advantage whether it's around the bottom of the racetrack or up there in that second line. I know a lot depends on what cars is lined up, but it's like one minute you look, looks like the bottom line's moving. Next time you look, looks like the, the middle, the second line's moving. Oh, there's some blocking going on there, and now we're three wide. Woohoo! That's what happens. You get in the middle there, and you don't even want to. You start to make a pass. The guy takes his line away, and you go back the other way, and you end up in the middle. Let's talk a little bit about green flag pit stops, which will be upcoming uh, before too long. Is there an advantage as far as one make over another on gas mileage? Well, just walking through the garage area this morning, I talked to probably 80% of the teams. It just seems like that the Dodges are just not getting that good of fuel mileage, in particular the Chip Ganassi cars, which would be Sterling Marlin in the 40 car. They talk like they could only run about 33 laps, which would put them coming in about 16 laps at lap 70. But like Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car leading the race, Chad Canals told me they're up there about 38 laps. That don't sound like a big difference, but when you stretch it out, stop over stop over stop, it almost makes a full pit stop difference. I still think the, the biggest problem these guys got, as you see, they're all together here, is they got to start deciding and talking to the spotter and the spotter telling people around them that they're going to pit when they get ready to go down, come off the of turn four and head for pit lane because they'll run over each other, come to the end of pit lane, lock up that right front tire. That means you got to change tires. 
you're trying to go from 190 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour, which is pit road speed. I tell you, that 19 car with uh, that alliance, the alliance that they've made with Penske is definitely paying off for Ray and, and his crowd today. And I think that caught us off guard the other day when he interviewed Ray, that he was saying that now they've joined forces with Penske on the restrictor plate engines. And uh, that was kind of a surprise to me, Daryl. I expect you'll probably see that alliance grow. When uh, Dodge got back into Winston Cup racing, Jim Julo and now John Fernandez really encourages cooperation among the team. So it, it seems like a natural fit. Anyway, it's one that pays off. Jeff? Like what I was going to say is I had an opportunity to talk to Roger Penske, you know, who's the owner of both the uh, 12 and the two of Rusty, Rusty Wallace's. But he was talk, telling me this morning how happy he was about Ryan winning last week. But he also shared a little bit of information with me. He really felt like his Dodge engine program had room to get better and better and better. And I think right now this alliance between Jeremy Mayfield, Bill Elliott, and obviously uh, Ray Everham is going to really pay off dividends for everyone in the Penske organization as well as Everham Dodge. Well, already Mayfield has led more laps today than he led in any race in 2002. Darrell, we talked about it in the uh, in the practice show yesterday. I think Jeremy Mayfield is a driver who really hasn't yet shown his full potential. No, and, and but he needs to go ahead and do it. He oh, doesn't need three. It's not. <laughs> he needs to quit holding back if he is, because uh, you know pressure mounts on all these high buck, uh, be it very visible teams. The driver has to perform and uh, you can only make you know you can only have so many excuses of why you haven't been able to and once you used them all up you know what's the next thing to go right and and I don't mean that he's doing anything wrong what I mean is his results I don't think are indicative of the talent he has he's won he's going to win some more oh I think so I mean we know he can drive uh, but sometimes the chemistry or whatever just keeps you from it Here's Kenny Wallace, Ward Burton just ahead. Mike Wallace is Kenny's older brother. Rusty is the oldest of the three brothers. And for the lead, Jeff Gordon on the outside with help from Ricky Craven. Gordon gets to push and Ricky gets hung up on the outside. That's just how it goes. But definitely, Darrell, we talk about wanting partners on the racetrack. You need partners on pit road, but you want to arrange it to where you don't have too many cars at one time and you're not pit next to a neighbor. You don't want to get clogged up on pit road, especially under a green flag stop. Big reaction from the fans as Jeff Gordon takes the lead, some waving, some shaking their fist. Ricky Craven on Gordon. You know, down here in Alabama, when they say roll tide, they normally are not, they're not usually talking about their football team, but today they might be talking about old Ricky there in the tight car. 58 laps as we go three wide. Jeremy Mayfield, he got a heck of a run off turn two down the back stretch with the help from Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. That Dodge does not lack for horsepower. No, not it doesn't. All. Strolling down that straightaway. That's when you got a good package. You got power under the hood, you got good aerodynamics. I mean, look at Greg Biffle in the 16 car. He's back up there again. Remember, they had to start at the tail end of the line because of pitting early, and he's made his way back up there bidding for a top five. Jeremy Mayfield leads the Aaron's 499, 59 laps complete, 129 to go at Talladega. Taking a little bit of the other guy to the winner's circle. That's fuel for the soul. Hey guys, meet the new guy. Hey. Hi, I'm Bob Holtkamp. Hey, Hi. help yourself to some snacks. Speaking of which, you know what would taste good about now? Yeah, a big, hot and juicy cheeseburger. With everything. I can almost taste it. Telling me, if there are a place to get a hamburger that good this late, I'd not only drive, I'd buy. Really? really? Wendy's classic hamburgers are made fresh, so they're always hot and juicy, so you can eat great even late. You must be the new guy. Yeah, thanks. Wendy's, it's better here.
trouble doesn't stand a chance. For the best part, people at price were ready in advance. Stop by any advanced store today and enter to win the 2004 championship in advanced sweepstakes. Winning the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship feels pretty good. Sweating doesn't. That's why you use Red Zone from Old Spice. It's the strongest stuff you can get, made just for guys. It absorbs in and helps stop sweat. And if you try it and don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. Hey, that's how I stay cool on the track. Well, maybe there's one other way. You spend the day going in circles, and you earn the right to do one more. That's fuel for the soul. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. By Old Spice. By Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. And by Pontiac Grand Prix, official pace car of NASCAR for 33 years. Jeremy Mayfield leads at 62 laps, and the caution is waving for debris in the trioval. What a break for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in particular, because he was over a half a lap down from these guys. Yeah, last lap by, he was 22 seconds back. That will be a break for him. Catch up time, and... You put your calculator away on pit stops, Larry. It was smoking over here, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> and we eavesdropped on Kurt Busch here a minute ago. All right, our temperature's up there again. Imagine if I got to back out of this. We can't do this. And basically what Kurt Busch is telling them, look, I'm up here in the middle of this pack. I can't be up here because my water temperature is going up. Dick, that means he didn't have enough air going through to the radiator. Yeah, and his other problem is the chassis isn't just right either, Larry. He's talking about the right front of the car rolling over, and they want to change the air pressure. So under the hood problems, chassis problems as well for Kurt Busch. Something came off of uh, either Steve Park or Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. That's the debris uh, that NASCAR has gone out to pick up in the trioval area. Not much left of uh, R Rusty Wallace's beer can there. Looks like it's been recycled. But he is back on track. That leaves in the garage Jimmy Spencer, Ryan Newman, Casey Mears, Johnny Benson, Ricky Rudd, Hermie Sadler. Well, you take from Jimmy Spencer on down 32nd. Uh, they're all about the same number of laps down. So if you can get, if you're behind those guys, you get back out and run five or six laps, you can move up seven, eight, ten spots, which is what they're thinking. Of course, all the leaders of beat a pit road. We were just within a handful of laps having to come to pit road. This may be a good time to take those four tires, Daryl. That way I can know I can run to the rest of the race on the left sides. But I'd say some of them's going to change just two. Dick Bergeron. Well, Kenny Francis heard you, Larry Mack. He's going to put four tires on Jeremy Mayfield's car. No adjustments to this automobile. They're going to put a little tiny piece of tape on the grill, and that's it. Matty. Now they're going to go for a four-tire change posture in the 48. Nope, they wave it off. They're going to go two. Michael Walter pulling out. Very close call with a 48. Two-tire changes. Well, they made an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Looked like Jeff Gordon in the 24. They changed just two right sides as well. Just don't, you know, nobody seems to be worried about uh, tires today. I mean, the handling's not, it's not like Daytona where it's so critical. Uh, the tire wear is not that big an issue. So I think two tires most of the time track position get up front That's like we it. heard Dale Jr. say yesterday once you get in front they can't pass me Kurt Busch opens up the grill to get some more air and cool that car down and the man with track position awesome Bill Bill Elliott leads the Aaron's 499 on Fox he did not pit Know what's great about listening to in-car audio? He went right into me going into three, just like he did four years ago. You're not just inside the car. It's four, boss. You're inside their heads. It's going to get ugly up here. Get track pass with Pit Command and listen to in-car audio all race long. Just log on to America Online, enter keyword NASCAR, or go to NASCAR.com. 
With Pit Command, you'll never watch or listen to a race the same way again. NASCAR.com. America Online keyword NASCAR. NASCAR on Fox, sponsored by Bobcat of Buffalo. Excavation. Construction. Landscaping. Agriculture. Fertile work for the Bobcat team of compact equipment. From compact loaders to compact excavators, telescopic tool carriers, and a full complement of attachments, Bobcat equipment will make any job easier. Bobcat. It's one tough animal. Rent or own today at Bobcat of Buffalo, Transit Road, Lockport, New York. Injuries suffered as a result of a serious accident often have devastating effects. To obtain what's right and just, your choice of a law firm is critical. At Salino and Barnes, we offer you our experience and a track record of proven results. During the past two years, we've likely recovered more money for more accident victims than any firm in Western New York. By achieving these exceptional results for our clients, we have become one of America's largest personal injury firms. Our success is the difference. When ski first shook up the snowmobiling world with the rider-centric rev platform, they couldn't wait for the competition to try and catch up. So they didn't. Presenting the new 2004 rev platform sleds, led by the MXC with new race-inspired RevX tunnel, followed by the all-new GSX loaded with performance and luxury, and the new Summit, the lightest production mountain sled. The ski rev platform. There's still nothing like it. On the track, odds are so is Track Pass. Just log on to America Online or go to NASCAR.com and get Track Pass. NASCAR.com, America Online, keyword NASCAR. Fox tonight, the boys are cleaning up for Lois's return. But when she gets home... Boys, I miss you so much. Dad, knock on your bedroom wall. Will she crack? Ooh. Honey, come here. The eggs are hatched. An all-new Malcolm in the Middle, followed by the unluckiest family in history, The Pit. It's weird, wacky, and laugh-out-loud funny. When was the last time you saw her with a guy? You try getting a boy to ask you out living in this family. I don't want a boy to ask me out. The Pit, after Malcolm, all-new at 9, 8 central, tonight on Fox. To everyone in the armed forces, on behalf of myself, everyone in the NASCAR Winston Cup garage, and especially on behalf of our GM Goodrich team, we appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Keep it up and come home safe. That's Kevin Harvick, <clears throat> excuse me. A big welcome to all of our American coalition forces watching on American Forces Network around the world. We're all very proud of you. 65 laps, Bill Elliott did pit under this caution. He stayed out and led a lap to collect five bonus points. And here's where our Coca-Cola Racing family sits at the moment. Elliott back to 18. Not quite the last car on the lead lap because there have been more pit stops, including Dale Jarrett and Kurt Busch and John Andretti, who is still on the lead lap. So is Tony Stewart. Remember, Steve Park got caught two laps down when they had to fix his spoiler. Bobby Labonte crash damage. Jeff Burton and Ricky Rudd in the garage. Dick Bergeron? Well, Sterling Marlin just pitted for some more fuel, and they did a little tape work on the nose, Mike, but you know how strange Talladega is. All sorts of weird things happen here. Sterling was on the backstretch and hit the button on his steering wheel to talk to the crew, but instead, he hit the engine kill switch button, killed the motor. Tony Santana Cola in the pit area said that when that happened, not only did the motor stop, his heart stopped, too. They got it fixed. He got going again. He's just taking some more fuel. Steve Burns. Hey, thanks, Dick. I said earlier that Matt Kenseth's team was using bare bond tape to replace or work on that front grill. This is a tape that's very similar to what plumbers will use. Now, on that last pit stop, Matt Kenseth came in. They took right side tires. They're going to pull a little piece of tape off the grill, but it got hung up in this bare bond tape, so they weren't able to do it on that stop. You know, Larry was talking about the Dodgers not getting great fuel mileage. I mean, Bill Elliott waited a lap or two. Come in. If you get topped up now, you can run as far as maybe the guys that do get fuel mileage, which will be a big plus here later on. And definitely chalk, talking to Lee McCall, Sterling Marlin's crew chief this morning, of all the guys that I took a poll as far as how far you could run, they probably could run the least amount of laps. These cars won't meet the corporate average fuel economy numbers. They get about eight miles per gallon under caution, about four miles per gallon, four to five miles per gallon under green. 66 laps complete. Three Chevys, two Fords, a Pontiac, and a Dodge in the first seven positions. 
Pontiac nor, Do nor Ford have led a lap yet today as we get set for the restart. That's not too shabby when no. you think about it. I mean, you run 190 miles an hour and you're wide open. So that's, that's pretty darn good gas mileage. You know what, guys? A few months ago, a lot of people spent money at Christmas for some surround sound. What do you think we uh, I know where you're going. To crank it up. Here Let's do that. Little. What do you think? Let's crank it up. Crank her up, boys. Jimmy Johnson hauls this fast freight train around Talladega. 68 laps complete. Mike Skinner is the latest of the crash-damaged cars to return to the racetrack. And this is definitely a race of the haves and the have-nots. The haves have all their body. The have-nots only got about half of them. <laughs> That's right. Let's go to the leader's pit. And that's the 48. Chad Canals, your car's out front. Now, what's the deal that you and Slugger Labby have worked out? Right now, with the way the race is playing out, there's a bunch of guys being able to make moves on the outside. You know, what happens, guy gets up front, he starts riding the brake. The guys on the outside are able to get a run. So we're just going to try to stay in line, stay on the bottom, and keep that from happening if we can. We're getting comparable fuel mileage, so we're going to try to work together, you know, for the rest of the race and see what happens. To Genie Zalasco. Well, the 22 of Ward Burton complaining about a bad, bad vibration. He says it feels like a tire is about to blow. His crew chief, Frankie Stoddard, thinks they might have lost wheel weight. We'll keep you posted. And what Chad's talking about, like the guy gets up front and he rides a brake, what you want to do is time it just right where you break people's momentum. If you're leading the race and you're protecting the bottom with that yellow line, you run down in the corner, let up out of the gas, or hit the brake, kind of gets everybody checking up, and they can't get around you. Takes too long to recover. And Ward Burton's problem, you know what happens in your passenger car if you lose a wheel weight and get that harmonic vibration at certain speeds at 70 on the highway, maybe? We'll try that at two and a half times the speed. Yeah, that or, you know, if you just leave it, this racetrack particularly, if you leave a lug nut loose, uh, or there are a number of other things that could be going on there. Like Dick Beatty used to say, that vibration, it's not going to go away. It won't fix itself normally. And we're back to three wide. Tony Raines in the middle, that unsponsored white car. Now he drops to the bottom. And the thing about a vibration, I mean, the driver, he's the only one that really knows how bad it is. And so it really ends up being your call. And you hate to come to pit road and find out there was nothing wrong. But you're sitting there holding your breath, hoping everything's all right. And Ward Burton is drifting back toward the back of the lead pack now. He's back there with Sterling Marlin back at about 22nd position and he might be wanting to get back uh, out of the fray there where he can see really make a decision on what kind of problem he's got and I tell you what talking about drifting to the back Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car that car is not right he is losing the lead draft up there and he's running about a half a second slower than the leaders we thought catching up there you see him right there the Budweiser car we thought catching up with that caution would put him back in good shape but that car is just not there now Daryl Apparently, the damage to the nose is a lot worse than it appears to be. Well, it may be just more than aero damage on the nose. Greg Biffle's car is all taped up, but he's right up there with the pack. Biffle's damage is more to the side of the car, Mike. 
uh, and, and Dale Jr.'s is in the front, that, that's, that's a lot worse place to have damage. Greg Biffle in the 16 car, he's sitting up there in sixth position. It, it has been an eventful day uh, with all the damage running hot, and these guys, they, they just refuse to die with this thing. Did the same thing. I just think back to Bristol. Did the same thing. Fought it, fought it, fought it, and came home with a good finish. Top five finish. And I tell you, nobody's driving any more aggressively than he is because he goes high, low, middle. He just, you know, if there's a crack, he goes in there. Two drivers you'd expect to be having a better day are Earnhardt Jr. and the Winston Cup champ, Tony Stewart, who got a little damage also in that wreck at lap four, and he is back one spot behind Junior in 23rd. There are 24 cars on the lead lap. And you can see the damage on the nose, and that's the worst place you can have it here. Jimmy Johnson at 73 laps leads the Aaron's 499 on five. The chicken has got to be just so, and it comes out so golden brown and crunchy. Ooh. Come on to my house, my house will come You've got to have the combination of marinara sauce, the chicken, and the mozzarella. Just the right amount. Bellissima. Back for a limited time, the Italian chicken sandwich at Burger King. Crispy all-white meat chicken, rich marinara sauce, and mozzarella cheese. Or have it your way and choose the original chicken sandwich. Only at Burger King. Come on to my house. You want to know what I like most about racing cars? Two words. Michael Waltrip. That's right. Just last night, I dreamed the whole world used quality Napa Auto Parts. It was the best dream I ever had. I had that dream, too. I think I'm in love with Napa. There's nothing wrong with that, Steve. I like it. Can you bring up the logo? Good, 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 good. In 2002, Ford won 14, 14, 14 cup races. And at the end of the season, seven of the top 10 cars were Fords. In fact, Ford was the first to win 500, 500, 500 cup races. Victories that brought Ford 15 manufacturers championships. And that makes Ford, 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 the team to watch. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Dale, I know you still don't want to race our truck, but you got to admit, the new logo makes it look a lot faster. Okay, you can roll the film, John. Look at that baby move. Look at that. It's nothing. Just wait till you see this. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Fox welcomes you back live to the Aaron's 499 here in Talladega, Alabama with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, and Jimmy Johnson, your leader, through 76 laps in team racing and Hendrick Motorsports, part of it. Uh, Everham, DEI, those have been your leaders. No Ford or Pontiac has led today. Well, what you're looking at right now, these cars here qualified up, qualified up toward the front, these teams, and I think they've been able to work together to be able to lead this race and to show how kind of dominance they've gotten. Right now, Jimmy Johnson in that uh, Hendrick Power number 48 looks pretty impressive. And you know, NASCAR mandated the smaller fuel cells starting at Talladega last fall. Seemed to work the race run without a caution, but this time the crash happened early. The smaller cells never really had a chance to make a difference. Let's watch this on lap four as you continue to see the live action, Jeff Hammond. It starts with Ryan Newman. Yeah, Ryan Newman cut a tire down and literally just spun right up in front of the old, whole field. I mean, he sustained ser serious damage. See the car to catch on fire. He walked away, but a lot of guys really got 27 cars took out a lot of guys who really had a 
think that was the most promising tire right day there, but I over saw the, the tire off. Yeah, what does a tire weigh like that when it goes over the When wall? it's got a spindle hook to it like it right there, you're probably talking about almost 125 pounds, maybe 30 pounds as far as flying around. And, and you see the, the damage right there to the left front of uh, Ryan Newman's car. Again, Ryan Newman, a tough finish, finishing last at uh, Daytona and at Talladega last year. That, 27 cars involved in that. That's the most ever. That is the biggest of the big ones. 24 cars were involved in the wreck uh, last year. As we go uh, back upstairs, rejoin Mike Larry in there. Kenny Schrader has rejoined the race. Rusty Wallace and Jimmy Spencer each made a couple of laps and have gone back to the garage and retired. Jack Sprague and Jeff Burton's cars are still under repair, but the cars that have been withdrawn are Ryan Newman, Casey Mears, Johnny Benson, Ricky Rudd, Hermie Sadler, Jimmy Spencer, and Rusty Wallace. Kurt Busch has been bouncing around the front part of the pack, but he had that overheating problem. Dick Bergeron? Well, he came into this race as the hottest driver in NASCAR with a trio of second place finishes, a win, and a ninth place. But Jimmy Fenning is crew chief. What can you do about that overheating problem that won't mess up the chassis? Uh, about the only thing we can do is pull some more tape up, but that's going to mess up our aerodynamics. But uh, we got to be there at the end, so we're going to have to pull some more tape off next stop. Okay, good luck with it. Matty? Earlier in the race, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s water temperature climbed to 240. They pulled some tape off, but he has lost the draft. Tony Sr., what's wrong? He's lost the draft. I was sitting there asleep, went on the restart. And I don't know what he was doing. They just drove off from him. Uh, car's fine. Uh, nose is in pretty good shape. Been running as fast as the leaders were. He's getting a little bit of air off of them there, but they're gone now, so the only thing we can hope for is a caution. And Matt, he speaks the truth because Daryl and I have been watching the score monitor. He's back there with no help. Now, he can see those cars, and when you can see them, they're helping you. But uh, the last 10 laps, he's been just as quick as Jimmy Johnson leading this race. And I want to just talk about this tape. We hear so much about pulling tape off. The fans may say, why do these guys put this tape on the noses? Well, at a place like this, you get the best of both worlds with tape on the nose. It reduces the drag on the straightaway, makes it run faster, plus it helps the front downforce. And it's hard for a crew chief to make himself pull tape off that nose and give that up. Yeah, you just can't be too aggressive with it. I mean, you know, there's a fine line between what the engine will take, and that's really what it's all about, taking care of that engine to make 500 miles. Darrell, as I watch Matt Kenseth, this 17 group, you've won three championships. This group is doing what they have to do every week to win a championship. They're taking terrible situations, making good, taking good situations, and making them great situations every week. Well, I just always look to uh, the pit box. I know Matt's a great driver, and I, I know he probably gets tired of hearing about his his crew chief, but uh, boy, those guys down there in the pits, they just make so, they, they run a smart race, and it comes from the pits. And they don't panic in, dis in disastrous situations, and they fix it, and they go on about their business. What do drivers do when they're riding around at 185 miles an hour? Well, sometimes they converse with their crews. Here's Michael Walter. Two Hendrix cars are really fast. Yeah, 10 4. Well, man, this is going to be a long day. All right, man. Do the best you can. Everything's going good. It's going to be a great day. Of course, he's referring to Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, and Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car. All that's going on, that conversation at 190 miles per hour. I read with interest the other day where some of the drivers, they were asked them what they like to hear from the crew chief and from the spotter, and it was, uh, was kind of interesting to me how some said they don't want to be talked to, leave me alone. Others say they want to be talked to all the time. I, I don't think you... Some said they don't want a cheerleader, uh, you know. Personally, I just always like to be encouraged. Uh, it made me feel better. It made me knew that the guys are in the game with me. And you know that the funny thing about that, Daryl, Daryl Earnhardt would tell me, I don't want to be talked to, so I'd go laps without talking to him. He'd say, anybody watching this race but me? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the way it is. Matt Kenseth has taken over the lead. And remember, the driver that thought he had a vibration and fell back to 20th? That's Ward Burton. Genie. Oh, 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 trouble, guys. Turn three. Michael got into somebody going into three over there. I believe I saw Jeremy Mayfield, the pole sitter there. You see Kyle Petty. Did all I could do. I got squeezed out. It wasn't my fault. That's cool. Get down here. We'll bang the fenders out and everything. Look at everything real good, guys. Fourth caution of the day, lap 83. And of course, what Michael Waltrip's misfortune Junior gets caught back up. Elliot Sadler. 
I don't believe pit road is open yet. No, it is not open, but they had some damage. I think they were afraid of cutting a tire down, and he should be able to get back out, I think. It's going to be awfully close before those leaders come back around. And Look at that eye right there. The other driver who benefits if he did have that vibration. I was just starting to talk about Ward Burton, who'd made his way up to second place. But Michael coming in with damage. Trying to stay. Yeah, everything's good. See what happens here. He's going down there. Jeff Gordon's underneath of him. Ooh, Jeff was. He just got into a tight spot there. Made contact. Gets Jeremy Mayfield, oh. the 19 car. Boy, Robbie Gordon and the 31 Tony Reigns, all those cars just barely make it by. Where he was running, we were lucky this wasn't the big two. Looked like he jumped out from behind Jeff Gordon there, possibly, and uh, was looking to make a, a move on him. And um, I think that, evas that, that quick move that he made Got him in trouble. Boy, Mike, we are lucky there wasn't more cars involved in that one. Is it right in the middle of the field? From Michael. Now, Michael comes off pit road to stay on the lead lap. Boy, did you see Kyle? I mean, he was just headed right for him. Jeannie? differential from the tire changes that they made to the right side and the left side. This time he came in, got right sides only and fuel. Steve? Four tires for Matt Ketseth and they did take a little piece of tape off that left front grill this time, Jeannie. Two Hendrick cars win the race off pit road, Jimmy Johnson and Joe Nemechek. Jimmy Johnson and 48, Chad Knauss, they wanted track position. They wanted to lead the race, Matt. Looked like fuel only. Fuel only, Larry. Now they led the race off pit road, but Kurt Busch scored as the leader on that lap over Elliott Sadler. These guys went to school yesterday, and and uh, Joe Nemechek had a faster car than Dale Jr., but once Dale Jr. got in front, Nemechek couldn't pass him. And Dale Jr. said on the radio, get me in front of him on the pit stop. And he never looked back after that. So uh, it's so critical to get into the lead because it's really hard to pass the leader. Let's have another look at what happened to the 15 of Michael Waltrip. Boy, Robbie Gordon in the 31, which he, we saw him on pit road with his hood up. He was so fortunate to make it through there. Yeah, and uh, Michael comes down and... Michael Walter goes around, collects pole sitter Jeremy Mayfield, and puts us under the fourth caution of the Aaron's 499. I know a little something about making good moves. Good move. Good move. So if you're thinking about Viagra, one of the best moves you can make is a pit stop to see your doctor. Ready to ask your doctor about Viagra for the first time? Find out if a free sample is right for you. Make your move. Talk to your doctor about Viagra today. To learn more, race over to Viagra.com. Mr. Goodwrench, who is this one and only GM expert? You've seen Mr. Goodwrench around the track. Sure. Well, how can he be there and at the GM dealership? How do you mean? How do you mean? Mr. Goodwrench actually knows GM cars better than you. You better believe it. Don't tell me what to believe, Harvick. I'm the one holding the clipboard here, okay? Find Mr. Goodwrench at over 7,000 GM dealerships nationwide. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Happy. How's the sound system in this puppy? Get out. Okie doke. Jeff Gordon. Mm. I just love the way he gets in his car. Oh, that's smooth. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Papa John's. After 19 years, no question, it's an amazing pizza. Celebrate Papa John's 19th anniversary. Get two large one-topping pizzas for just $11.99. Call us now. We'll be right there. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. 
This is big. Oh, good. Tums. Correction. Tums Smooth Dissolve. Introducing new Smooth Dissolve, a velvety smooth new texture that dissolves fast, rushing relief right to where you need it. It's like whoosh. New Tums Smooth Dissolve. Senseless garage door destruction. A problem no more thanks to the twice as fast accelerator. Only from Genie. You want to know why I ran from Enterprise? Because having the right car can make all the difference. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. A trip to the world's most famous spa could be yours. Woohoo! It's where J Lo hit P Diddy upside the head with Gary Coleman. Are the Simpsons ready to rub elbows with the rich and famous? Oh my God, a naked celebrity. Be cool. Don't stare at his famous. Ha ha ha. The Simpsons at 87 Central, followed by an all new Oliver Bean tonight on Fox. DEI, known for dominating restrictor plate racing. Michael Waltrip won this year's Daytona 500. Junior swept everything else during speed weeks. Now you can relive the experience on DVD. NASCAR's road to Daytona 2003 in incredible surround sound. Watch Dale Jr. and Michael Waltrip or your favorite driver race through speed weeks, culminating in the great American race. To order, call 1-800-856-4266. That's 800-856-4266. And yeah, we welcome you to our Visa race break and welcome back to Talladega. We've had 17 lead changes following our fourth caution with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers at the Hollywood Hotel. By the way, the record for lead change is 75 set in 1984. I don't think we're going to have that today, do we? <laughs> no, but uh, certainly uh, the more lead changes, the more exciting and yeah. a little bit of adventure. Elliot Sadler uh, leading. Yeah, that's right now. He just... Uh, avoided a wreck right now, but I think right now we're getting a chance to do a little bit of recap about the big one right now. We've had a lot of wrecks today, a lot of close calls right now. The first one happened right there on lap four. This, oh, excuse me, this is Michael's wreck just a second ago. Yeah, that happened on lap 83 right here, and Michael and Jeff Gordon got together. Jeff got down underneath Michael, I think, and kind of like, you know, run him up off of that bottom just a little bit. He got into Mike Wallace. Around he went. Elliot Sadler got into him. He spun up. He also collected Jeremy Mayfield, who had been leader for a long time, and uh, Darrell, that right there, it looked like it was just everybody tried to get in one place a little too quick. Yeah, I think what happened was Gordon took uh, Michael by surprise. He got down under him going into the turn there. Matter of fact, he's got he's all the way down on the yellow line. Michael tried to give him room, and when he moved up right there, he got into the side of Mike Wallace and took it and uh, turned him around. And it's a miracle that really only two cars, Waltrip and Mayfield, were damaged. Oh yeah, because he slid right up in front of a whole bunch of good race cars right there. Elliot Sadler did a great job, and I don't know how much I don't know how much damage Jeremy got. And and Tony Raines missed another one by inches. That's two. How many lives does that cat have today? And Elliot Sadler pitted a moment ago, so Jimmy Johnson, your leader uh, at the moment. And by the way, uh, Jimmy Johnson was the uh, points leader going into the uh, Talladega race uh, last fall, and he finished uh, 37th in that race, so it shook things up uh, just a little bit. Yeah, and one other thing I want to point out, too, Michael Walter had spoke earlier about the strength of the Hendrick cars. If you notice right now, Jimmy Johnson, as well as Joe Nemechek, uh, yesterday, I mean, the guy who sat on the pole yesterday in the Bush race, running one two and uh, Jeff Gordon right there in fifth so I've been having some really strong runs right now by the Hendrick cars let's check out some pit action Jeff take us through it well he's backing up in the pits right now he's, whoa he almost gets one of the guys right there they're probably trying to make some repairs uh, to that right side of the car which was heavily damaged when they got into the wall right there a second ago and uh, they're just trying to fix everything they got the number one tool out there they got the tool out there Oh, now. Oh, that's always good. Having to put a little extra emphasis in it, and uh, you got to be careful right now. But I think Steve is down there with Mike Wallace, who was another guy who was caught up in this wreck. Steve? Yeah, Jeff, he's got damage to the left rear quarter panel of his car and a byproduct of the damage and the contact. The battery was damaged, so Mike Wallace has been on and off pit road three times. They've had to replace a battery, and now they're going to come back in, and they have the Sawzall out. That's never a good sign. He lost a lap. This has been a uh, Visa race break, and uh, losing a lap, as Steve Burns just reported, uh, we'll be back through 87 laps at Talladega. Thanks for being with us here on Fox. So, Mikey, why can't I drive the dream machine? Well, Daryl, it's your age. My age? Yeah, let's face it, we've done the math. You are retired. Hmm. 
You're never too old to save, so why rent the long, expensive way from Rentway? Lease the quicker, cheaper way from Aaron's. Do the math. Shop Aaron's. This retiree has 84 wins and three championships. What do you say? I say boogity, boogity, boogity. Hey, I'm supposed to say that. The new Silverado is here, now with quadrasteer four-wheel steering. It's the most maneuverable, full-size pickup you can get. Silverado, the truck from Chevy. This is a phone jack. It's a fact that all phone jacks are alike. When you plug your computer into it, it takes you to the same place, the Internet. Same phone jack, same Internet. So why do some companies jack up the cost of Internet access to twice the price of Net Zero? With Net Zero, you get the same Internet for only $9.95. So don't let anyone jack with your price. Net Zero. Internet access, only $9.95. Go to netzero.com. Shame something would have happened to her. What could happen? What could happen? What could happen? Things. Things? Things. I want to think about getting some protection. If you want protection, you want the Prestone family. And for tough protection against road grime, salts, and acid rain, you want Prestone Car Wax. Don't even think about it. Prestone protection, inside and out. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Prestone, when you want protection inside and out, you want the Prestone family. By McDonald's. And by Net Zero Internet Access. 88 laps complete, green flag next time around. Here's the Craftsman Truck Series Championship standings. Brought to you by Sears. Next week, they go to Martinsville, where they'll run Sunday, or Saturday, and Darrell Waltrip will be in the field. Yes, I will, in the old tide ride. Leroy's me boys, me and Leroy's boys are going to take it to them next week. Coming to the green. And Jimmy Johnson and Joe Nemechek, Hendrick Motorsports Chevy teammates, leading the Dodges of Ward Burton and Sterling Marlin, the Chevy of Jeff Gordon, the Dodge of Kenny Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Tony Stewart, and Greg Biffle, the top ten. See Mark Martin, the sixth car, alongside Jimmy Johnson back out there. We was watching that car. Darrell, he's running pretty good. I mean, he's 34 laps down. They did a good job of repairing that car. That's the main thing. Is if you're going to send a guy back out there to run 190 miles an hour, send him out there in something that's safe and sound. And right behind him, Mike Wallace in the 09 car. You heard Steve Burns talking about the battery problem. He's a lap down. Mike Wallace would love to see a caution right now, get back on the lead lap, hopefully. And now every car that was damaged in the crash on lap four has either been retired, seven of them, or is back in the race. Trouble. Down through the tri-oval. Caution is out. Caution is out. Tony Stewart got pinched up to the wall and cautioned quickly away. 97 car got a lot of damage on the right front. Mike Wallace did not get his lap back there. You see Kurt Busch, the 97. Damage, and a lot of smoke from Tony Stewart. Looks like a right front and a left rear of two cars came together. Stewart was running eight. In other words, they made contact. Let's see what happened to bring out this fifth caution of the day. Tony Stewart, top of your screen. Bush inside him. Wow. Goodness gracious. And Biffle. Biffle. Ricky Craven in the 32 car, very fortunate. See a lot of cars going down pit road just to stay away from the accident. 
And Tony Raines <laughs> dodges another. <laughs> Big stack up of the field. Ricky Craven hard on the brakes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Think, uh, eight car yeah. went by him, gained about three or four yeah. positions. He was down on the flat and everywhere in the world. Now there's your Winston Cup champion and one of your top point runners, Kurt Busch, the point standing runner up, along with last year's Busch champion, Biffle. Not a lot of championship form right there. No, it looked like it, uh, Bush was going to actually try to squeeze between Biffle and Tony Stewart, and he and he didn't have the room to do it. Let's watch from Tony. Tony's car will be seriously damaged. And from Robbie Gordon. car of Tony Stewart. He has radioed in. He thinks job, his track uh, bar bracket is broken. Was in that of course, Jeannie, the track bar actually holds the rear end in the center of the car. There you see someone's tire rolling across the... Or that's the tread of the tire, and we're hearing that's off of Kurt Busch's car. Dick Berger. Yeah, it sure is. There's virtually nothing left. There is nothing left. There was just the wheel on the right front of Kurt Busch's car and the tiniest little bit of rubber. A piece of the bumper just got taken out of the nose. The plan here is to get right side tires on the car, then bring it back in again for the work, and there will be a lot of work. The right front fender is virtually gone. Mechanics right now trying to pound it out to put at least a little bit of shape in it and just enough shape so it doesn't get into the new tire that they're going to fire on. Meanwhile, there's another mechanic working on the left front corner of this automobile. A lot of damage to Kurt Busch's car, and most of it is aerodynamic in the nose. There's a, a certain irony to this. You spend months and two to three trips to the wind tunnel to get a car aero-perfect to Talladega to have it end up like this? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, if we, uh, you know, if we were at Marksville or Bristol and these cars were all banged up like this, you wouldn't think too much about it. But uh, here, it's just, you can't race that way. There you see the tread coming off of Kurt Busch's right front tire. Daryl, everywhere we race, a good day is a good top five finish. What's a good day at Talladega like? Driving that bad boy back in the truck when the race is over with is a good day for me. Pit stops under this caution. Matt? Well, Mike, the 24, Jeff Gordon's going to pit. He came on the radio and said, I ran over something big on the left side. Do not want to take a chance. They're going to pit and take on four tires. No chassis adjustments to Gordon today. Now, Kevin Harvick may well have run over some debris on the speedway. He came in to pit because he had a flat tire. Dale Jarrett pitted, Ricky Craven, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, Kenny Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Elliott Sadler, and on back. And, of course, we saw Harvick uh, follow Bush down pit road, and Bush had damage, probably run over some debris off of his car. Jeremy Mayfield also pitted. He was damaged in the Michael Waltrip collision, but stays on the lead lap. Kurt Busch and Tony Stewart. A lot of these guys pitting right there, topping off. This may be where they can do it in two stops, but you know what, guys? The skies are getting blacker. And the rain is on the way in Talladega. Hey, Tom, I told this guy you make a great sandwich. Tell him. Well, I start with a rich blend of savory Monterey and cheddar cheeses. Then add flavorful herbs like garlic, dash of oregano, a pinch of rosemary. Sounds like a great sandwich. Sandwich? That was just the bread. Great bread makes a delicious sandwich. That's why Subway has a line of gourmet breads like the tasty new Italian urban cheese. Fresh baked with garlic, oregano, rosemary, topped with Monterey Jack and cheddar cheeses. Ready to hear more? I think I'm ready to eat. Subway! What are you doing, Bobby? Making a reality show. Who wants to marry a tech? But he's already married. Shh, we don't reveal that until the last episode. Well, why are you filming him changing his Autolite double platinum plugs? He knows things. Like Autolite is the official spark plug of NASCAR. It's part of what makes him a great catch. Autolite, it's time to change your plugs. Dad, how about voting somebody off the driveway? Morning. Those are all good. 
friend, but after cheating on me, he deserves something way more painful. Tell it over a great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Cake. It looks just like mom. Um, you gotta see this. Now we can. PCS Vision from Sprint, you could do more. Like take, send, and receive full color pictures right on your phone on the largest enhanced nationwide PCS network. You see, doesn't it look like her? Thanks. You're welcome. Bon appetit. Hi, okay. PCS Vision from Sprint. Clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. Swimming? Fishing? Or back riding? Ever get the feeling you're in the right place at the wrong time? NASCAR on Fox welcomes you back to the Aaron's 499 at Talladega. Mike Joy with Darrell Waltrip and Larry McReynolds. Five cautions, three for crashes, have made most of these cars somewhat less than dream machines. As you look at the big crowd here at Talladega from our Budweiser aerial coverage. 27 cars in the first wreck. Two, Michael Waltrip and Jeremy Mayfield. As we go back to green and a three-car crash, Tony Stewart's taking his car behind the wall. Greg Biffle and Kurt Busch return to the race. If you think about the thousands and thousands of dollars have been spent on these bodies down here, the man hours it takes to do it, boy, a lot of destruction here today. Costly destruction. There are your leaders, two Chevys and a Dodge. Johnson, Nemechek, Burton, and Marlin. Matt Kenseth holds fifth. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., who trailed the pack prior to the caution flag, is in sixth ahead of Bill Elliott, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Craven, and Terry Labonte. Well, we heard uh, Tony Sr. there say that, you know, he wasn't doing a very good job on that last restart. Car is fine, and, of course, we were watching on the monitor. He was running as fast as the leaders all by himself. I got to believe now that he's back up in there with that pack. He might just have a little something for him. That is Kenseth just ahead of Jr. But it just goes to show how important it is to stay up in this pack. That's why they do it. You know, you say, why don't you just get out of there? They're going to wreck like that all the time. Well, you got to get up in there if, you wanna, if you're going to try to win the race. Here comes Marlin up on the outside of Ward Burton for third. And Marlin looks like he's headed for the front. Got a good run off of two over there. Hey, Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now getting a heck of a push from Dale Jarrett in that UPS car on the outside line. I haven't mentioned Dale much today, and he's still hanging in there in pretty good shape with his new logo. Brand new race car. We're halfway, and in this race, if we haven't mentioned you, that's probably a pretty good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Now, how about our pole sitter, Jeremy Mayfield? He was involved in the crash with Michael Waltrip at lap 83. Dick Bergren? And his uh, position right now on the racetrack matches his car number, Mike. He is 19th, but he remains on the lead lap. And that's a tribute to his crew because he has made several pit stops where they have worked on the left side of the automobile, pounding it out, trying to get some sort of aerodynamic shape into the left side of the car. There is so much tape on the left side, you can't even read the number. But he's out there trying. He trails Elliott Sadler, who was also caught up in that same crash, as was Mike Wallace. Well, look at Terry Labonte in that five car right there. This is a great run for him, sitting up there in 10th place right now. He's missed the two big wrecks, two wins here. And, and you know, the last two weeks at Bristol and Fort Worth, these guys have had great runs, just terrible luck. So you're telling me I shouldn't have picked him last week. I should have waited to this week. Looking pretty <laughs> good this week. I don't like the way this looks, though, man. These guys are back three wide again, racing uh, pretty hard here. I don't think they're happy with three wide. They want to make it four wide here through the trial. Kyle Petty still in the mix. He is in 15th among those lead lap cars. 
Somebody reigns in 13. Somebody asked me why do we do why do they do that? I said because they can. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I tell you, this is a good run for Kyle. You know, being injured, a couple of rib injuries a couple of weeks ago at Bristol, and Mike, he was involved in the big one back in 1991 here. I think, 20, he, I think he may have broke his leg. Yes, 20 cars in that one, and it knocked Kyle out of action for I think a couple of months, six, seven, or eight weeks. Okay, guys, Mike, you just mentioned we're halfway. I've got to start doing the math. We're going, to, uh -oh. we're going to look and see. Maybe we don't have any caution, so you do the math. We have teammates that have become on different agendas. Remember, Jimmy Johnson, right here, he pitted back on lap 84 for fuel only. Now his teammate, Jeff Gordon, he came in on lap 92, so that makes it where he can run several more laps. The bottom line is, though, both those guys have to make two more pit stops to get the end of this race. But, Larry, I got a plan. You're going to love this plan. I'm going to tape things on my car that are going to fly off every 35 laps. Because I'm going to have to come to pit road, and if a caution, then I'm forced to come to pit road. Yeah. Steve Park came past the start-finish line, put a pass underneath the yellow line. He will get a black flag from NASCAR uh, for that. And for more on pits, or let's let's have a look at this. And he's already two laps down. And I think he must have been trying to maybe help Dale Jr. I don't know what he was doing. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Trying to keep him running over. Yeah. Junior's just in front of him. He's trying to get past Joe Nemechek. So he improved his position. Not in the race. He's two laps down. But he improved his position on the track. And went below the yellow line. That's a no-no. And he could have come down the back straight away. Pulled down to the inside. Let the guy go back by him. There would have been no penalty. But because he elected to stay there, I'm sure his argument would be, I was forced down there. And NASCAR's ruled otherwise. But when you're two laps down, uh, you don't really need to be doing things like that. So the black flag out for Steve Park. Let's pick up on Terry Labonte, the 12th place car. Here's Dick Bergeron. Uh, with Jim Long, his crew chief, and he's been watching our television broadcast. Terry remains on the lead lap. You've made a lot of pit stops. Have you got the car where you want it? Yeah, the car's pretty good there. You know, it's uh, the way this uh, play racing goes. You can be first one lap and 30th the next lap, you know. But uh, we're just trying to keep good tires on the car. We've been run over debris and those cautions, and it's uh, real happy with the car. We're just trying to figure out what lane to be in. Now, they've been running a conservative race, and that may be the way to win this race, Mike. For the lane to be in, not the outside. Jimmy Johnson was there. He's getting shuffled back. And, and the yellow line violation, a lot of people were critical of what happened to Sterling Marlin at Daytona. But what people need to realize is if you make that happen, if you make a pass, you pull down and let the guy have the spot back, they won't penalize you. But if you hold your position, they will. Bump draft. Bump, bump. Come on, baby. And who you that think is that is doing it? Piffle. That would be Greg <laughs> And Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I think Biffle's nose would have looked like that even if he hadn't been in a wreck. Greg Biffle's car at the end of this race is going to look like a box of Crayolas because it's got a little bit of every color on it somewhere. And he has been doing some hard pushing. Got a car coming on the pit road. And that'll be Park taking the penalty stop. Boy, Dale Jr. is wearing out the back bumper of Matt Kitson's car, too. He has tried every way he could to push him to the lead and has done it. Michael Walter back in the race after repairs for the crash on lap 83. Where'd Jimmy Johnson go? From the outside to the middle and now looking low. He's the fourth car in line on the inside. Kevin Harvick, first car in line on the outside. Well, we haven't seen Dale Jr. get up there like he did the last couple of times I've seen him race here and kind of run his line, and everybody had to follow him. He's had to work hard today. You know, guys, I'm looking here out of Dale Jr.'s car at Matt Kenseth. There's a piece of aluminum. I think it's a support for the rear bumper. Maybe Dale Jr. has bumped on him so hard it's <laughs> it broken has. loose. You see yeah. the pan right there. Yeah, that's a piece of aluminum that goes back to the rear bumper, and he has, he has beat on it so much he's got it knocked loose. Steve, I bet his crew chief's not too thrilled about that. Yeah, Robbie. Larry Mack talks about you guys overcoming adversity. You've got a taped up nose, the bumpers beat up in the back, but you're still leading this race. Well, I don't know. Everybody else looks about the same shape. <laughs> I don't know. They did a really good job of repairing it. I didn't think it would run like this, but uh, it's running pretty well. How about the damage to the back? Does that concern you? Well, if Burner keeps wrapping us in the back, we're going to lose the bumper, I guess. You know, they're just hitting the banging so much back there that uh, it's coming apart. 
more than likely that won't fall out. That's a pretty big piece of aluminum there that goes all the way around the fuel cell and up to the back of the bumper. And it didn't sound like Robbie would mind too much if he lost it. Probably wouldn't hurt anything. Tell you what, look at Kevin Harvick, our outside pole sitter in that 29 car. Four career starts here. Remember, Richard Childress Racing has nine wins here with Dale Earnhardt Sr. He's back up there looking racy at the front. If you kind of look back there behind these guys right here, the old veterans, they always tickle me. There's Terry Labonte back there. There's Bill Elliott back there. There's uh, Sterling Marlin back there. Dale Jarrett. He's just kind of riding along back here at the back of the field, keeping everything in tow. Might show these little these boys something at the end of the day. All right, we talked about Matt Kenseth's rear bumper. We think this is when this happened. This was coming through the travel. Watch Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. He's beating and banging on Matt Kenseth, the 17. Actually got him out of shape just a little bit. And again, that piece of aluminum is only held on by rivets, pop rivets. That's probably when it came loose. Whoa, he did it again. Man, he's got it knocked. I think he's trying to do what Robbie said. He's going to knock it off. And this is all happening at 190 miles per hour. And there's his teammate Biffle right up in the middle of it again. Now, Ward Burton is trying to pull the outside track up into front position. Did that a couple of times. It's kind of funny. After about three or four times, it ain't funny no more. I tell you, this is as good as that 22 car Ward Burton has looked since he won the Daytona 500 February of 2002 at a restrictor plate racetrack. Look at his teammate back there, Kenny Wallace, in the 23 car. He's looked good all day long. We're, we're riding with him right here. Sitting in the seventh position. Stack them two wide, stack them three wide, stack them four wide. That's where Kenny Wallace was. Way out there. Well, Number somebody, two. somebody needs a caution flag right now. It's Kurt Busch, yep. 97 car. He's just about to go a lap down. Goodness gracious. This is what I call bobbing and weaving right here. There is Bush going to surrender a lap to the leaders as Harvick on the outside with Biffle. This Two drivers who do not exchange Christmas cards working together. This is stick and get moved, stick and get moved. Dale Jr. is trying everything he can to get out front, but he just hasn't been able to work his way up there. 105 laps complete, 83 to go in the Aaron's 499 in Talladega. Daytona 500 champ Ward Burton out front. to maturity <laughs> we'll be there pizza. in my family if one wants pizza the other wants Chinese even their stomachs don't agree if one gets indigestion the other one gets heartburn if one gets nausea the other one gets well so I get Pepto-Bismol as it coats it relieves heartburn indigestion upset stomachs nausea and diarrhea it'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does agree Agree. Agree. Pepto Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. So this is the living room. Plasma TV. The awesome sound system. Toast. The hot tub. The grill. Oh yeah. Did I mention the driveway? Check out Visa.com to learn how you and three friends could win the ultimate NASCAR experience. Stay in a luxury RV, get a hot lap with Rusty Wallace or Kurt Busch, and tour the pits. Visa, if you love NASCAR, these are my neighbors. They're kind of noisy. It's everywhere you want to be. Your home, your ideas, and the freedom to express them. At Lowe's, we make it easy. Only Lowe's has top choice lumber, prime grade and center cut with four clean sides for better building. We also have a huge selection of professional grade building materials like roofing, siding, and decking. And at Lowe's, we have low prices every day, guaranteed. That's our promise. Lowe's, improving home improvement. Show your power of pride. Sign a thank you card for our troops at any Lowe's store. Hey! TGI Fridays introduces new sizzling chicken and cheese. 
Dig into Friday's delicious marinated chicken, over melted cheeses, sauteed vegetables, and a side of our signature mashed potatoes, all on one sizzling skillet. Friday's new sizzling chicken and cheese for just $8.99. Come get a taste of our new bold flavor. There comes a point when every young boy becomes a man. For Oliver Bean. Are you going to tell Mom? No. It's between us. That time is now. Jerry? It's Oliver's. He's a sex pervert. The new hit Oliver Bean after The Simpsons tonight on Fox. Welcome back to Talladega. 79 laps to go. Watch our uh, Bud Aerial coverage. Helicopter mounted high above the Talladega Super Speedway. New sheriff in town, Dale Earnhardt Jr., has taken the lead. We'll show you how it happened. Well, he's been pushing and shoving and doing everything he could to get that thing out front. <laughs> he knocked poor old Matt Kenson's rear bumper slam off. Ward Burton pointed him through on the inside. And then Mike Wallace, something let go on that white 09 in the high groove. You know, Jeff, you. Jeff Gordon in 24, he just barely had one lane at the top to go by. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Wallace has made a pit stop and come back on track. I was trying to see what that was because he came to pit road and he went back out. So uh, I'm not sure if he had an injured problem or maybe a tire go down. Jimmy Johnson has led as many laps as his car number. Old Spice lap leaders. Yeah, Mike Wallace is back out there, and uh, he's up to speed. Uh, so whatever that was, I think he may have had a problem with a, maybe a tire problem. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has now led the last six Talladega Winston Cup races. And that car just seems like once it gets in the front, there's a barrier between it and the rest of the field. They just can't get to it. And that's about the way his Bush car was yesterday as well when he won the race. And you watch him. I mean, everybody else is protecting the bottom, protecting, you know, they got to have somebody to help them. And he just sits out there, runs where he wants to. He runs high, he runs low, and everybody says, you want to run with me, you're going to have to follow me. If you missed it yesterday, Earnhardt Jr. was leading Joe Nemechek when a caution came out with a handful of laps to go. And he won the race under caution and ran out of gas half a lap later. We're making a charge here now. Here comes the 24 car down underneath. Without a lot of help. His teammates He's about got two car lengths back. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy's back there. Boy, those two cars look almost identical from up here. Bill Elliott, among active drivers. 52 races has led 523 laps here. That's a lot of miles. About three races are better. Three 500 mile races are better total. That's what that eight car reminds me of back in the 80s when Bill had such a dominant car at Daytona and Talladega. He could do exactly what Dale Jr. is doing. You just couldn't race him. You could follow him, but you couldn't pass him or race him. Remember the day here he came from two laps down to win without making up a lap under caution. He did it all under the green. Under the green. That was incredible. He was running faster than everybody else was in the draft. He was running that fast by himself. Yeah, he has eight butt poles here, Bill Elliott, and a lot of them was right in the road. Now, that's something Dale Jr. hadn't seen for a while. Somebody pulled down and passed him. But look, at he goes out there. Now, he's out there way high by himself. And Jeff Gordon get credited for leading that lap. Second one he's led today. Jr. in position to move up. In the NASCAR top 10, he came in here third, and he could move to second. Kurt Busch has uh, had difficulties and currently runs one lap down. Busch came in here second in the points. Michael, he was fourth, and he's had trouble. A number of people have had trouble. Tell you what, there's about 150,000 people here. I don't think anybody's sitting down right now watching this battle between Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. About like the battle last week at Texas. I mean, they're cheering and waving and like it's the last lap. And there's Greg Biffle right up in the middle of it. <laughs> Tape of flying in all directions. <laughs> that, car, that car is a, it's raggedy and I'm telling you, he's right there fighting for the lead. 
I have to say he's a, that's about as good an effort as I've seen from anybody here at Talladega to go through what he's been through today and still right up there racing with him. Look at these people. <laughs> they love it. Look at Biffle's old car back there. <laughs> Parts are flying everywhere. They talk about aerodynamics at Talladega and Daytona. Look at that thing. Just feathers flying in the wind. All they've done is put water in it. <laughs> right. Here's Matt. Well, Mike, all the non-DEI teams came into Talladega with a lot of motivation to end the Dale Earnhardt Incorporated streak. Some teams went to greater lengths to try to find out the DEI advantage over others. In fact, remember back to the Twin 125 when Steve Park's car was overheating. Water was coming out the overflow vent at the base at the rear corner of the right side of the hood. One team took our video in slow mode trying to find out how well that water was going up over the greenhouse. Another team on Thursday at the Daytona 500, remember, Michael Walters' winning car went to Daytona USA for display. One team sent two crew members down with a tape measure and camera in hand. They took enough pictures to write a book. They also took enough measurements. They said, hey, look, the car's on display. We paid our $750 to go in. Let's take advantage of it. They weren't the only team, though, that I'm told. A couple others did the same thing, just trying to find that DEI advantage. And, and when you think back to Bill Elliott, we were talking about him earlier, we all, all, everybody looked under the hood, looked under the hood, said Ernie's got something in that engine nobody else has. In reality, when it was all said and done years later, he had a small race car. They had narrowed the car up, made the car a little bit smaller than everybody else's, and actually he had a great aero advantage. Now, I would buy into that with the DEI cars if we didn't have to debt gum many templates today. But I tell you, that's interesting, Matt, about the water, because you can't see the air, but you can see a liquid. We used to come down here and put drops of oil on the car and see what the flow of the oil was around the greenhouse of the car to the rear spoiler, make changes based on that. Because, again, even though they claim you can, Matt, you can't see air. Exactly, Larry. And a lot of teams felt like, you know, you can't go into another team's locker room and see their game plan. But taking our video, they were just going to try to use that and see, like if they were in the back room of the wind tunnel while the DEI cars were just trying to see how they might be manipulating that air over the car. Three wide for the lead. Marlon wants it from Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon on the bottom. And Marlon well, has the help from that other Dodge, Kenny Wallace, in the 23. We've got to be careful right here coming off that corner. Three wide like that. Dale Jr. stuck in the middle. Right, everybody has help. It's three by three. Ty Norris talking to Dale Jr. Remember the old saying, four cars under a blanket when they get real tight on the short track at Nashville? This is 12 cars under a blanket. It's crowded under there. I mean, we have about 20 cars within less than a half a second of each other. <laughs> Biffle's old car is a pig in a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look but she's good one, D.W. Good up there where she's running. <laughs> but she's a pretty pig, oh, yeah, isn't she? she is. <laughs> Show pig. <laughs> the best damn sports show, period. Sports television like you've never seen it before. Four idiots sitting around talking sports. Great television. Hang with the fellas. Cut loose with the stars. What the hell does this have to do with sports? Finally, a sports show that gets the picture. Hey, hey. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Little boy asks his neighbors why they're always working on their yard. Neighbor looks up. Nothing more relaxing. Nothing wrong with getting your hands dirty. Boy's dad asks how they manage it all. Neighbor nods across the yard. Nothing runs like a deer. John Deere lawn and garden tractors. Durability, precision, versatility, and exclusive support. For everyone who puts more into their yard and expects more out of their tractor. Find out which John Deere is right for you at your authorized dealer. Rich and powerful insurance companies often attempt to severely limit the rights of accident victims. When they are successful, the cost of the victim's disability and rehabilitation falls upon all of us, the taxpayers. If you are ever injured, your choice of law firms is critical. By successfully fighting for our clients against insurance companies, Salino & Barnes has become one of America's largest personal injury firms. Call us. We'd be honored to fight for you. Pro Stock, Dragster, Granny Car, Super Drive, Winston Cup, Bush Grand National, Final
find the cars of your dreams at Finish Line Motorsports. Finish Line carries a full line of Action, Revell, Ertle, and Racing Champions model cars. Finish Line specializes in all-scale, die-cast collectible model cars. Come to Finish Line for hard-to-find, older, specialty, or one-of-a-kind models. From beginner to expert, Finish Line has the model car for you. Finish Line Motorsports, 785 Fetch and Road, near Gates Bowl. The Simpsons, King of the Hill, and Seinfeld. Weeknights at 6 on Fox Rochester. Looks aren't important. Beauty's only skin deep. It's what's inside that can. We'll see about that. On April 21st, Fox will find out what's really important when 20 guys try to win one woman's heart without ever showing their faces. And once she's chosen Mr. Right, will her love last when the mask comes off? Things could get ugly on the new series, Mr. Personality, coming Monday, April 21st to Fox. Boston Public is in for some big changes from an unexpected romance. I like him. He's a crazy... It's nuts. ...to an indecent proposal. I'm seeing Zach. That's just the way it is. Is that the way it is? Or is that the way it is for now? An all-new Boston Public, followed by Married by America at 8, 7 Central Fox Monday. NASCAR on Fox welcomes you back to the Aaron's 499. Oh, a little oh. something flapping from the right side of was that Ward Burton's car or Matt Kenseth's? Oh, uh, no, it was just the tape on Greg Nibble's car. It's flying sorry apart. To be, sorry, that confused me. I think it's flying apart. We've seen it every lap for the last hundred here. Pit stops are beginning under green. First time today. And some of the leaders have peeled off and in. Yeah, this would be a lot of the cars that pitted back on lap 84. There you see Sterling Marlin in the 40 car, Mark Martin in the sixth course, many laps down. This would be about 38 laps, so this is about when they're they're due in there. Yeah, 38 to 42, I would think. How about it, Dick? Well, this morning, Lee McCall told me that the fuel mileage in Sterling's car is not the best. In fact, all three of the Ganassi cars are getting less fuel mileage than they would like to see. This will be a four-tire stop for Sterling Marlin. They've torn the windshield covering off. Two tires stop for Sterling. They left the left side tires on it. Tony Stewart returns to the race. He is 31 laps down. Bill Elliott also making a pit stop among the lead lap cars. Biffle keeps losing more tape, but not losing any speed. No, uh -uh. Now, with all the work you do on it. Uh oh, uh oh, that's a big piece of metal getting loose there now. With that's just tape, Daryl. I believe. I, I don't know. I, I thought I saw some metal flapping under there. How does see that, that car still run that fast in that shape? Yeah, see that metal sticking metal. up there? Yeah. yeah, that's not good. And you know, if he was here trying to run single laps by himself, this car would be a pig. Oh, yeah. But in the dirty air with all these other cars, you can get by with it a little bit like this. Yeah, that car's not seeing a lot of air. But if he ever loses the draft, big time trouble. Be in trouble. Bye bye. There's some guys right now that are hoping that if that's going to come off, it does it in the next lap or two. More leaders to pit road. More of our lead lap cars. These are all scheduled green flag stops with the smaller 13 half gallon fuel cells. You go complete 125, 124. You yeah. go complete the next this lap right here. Biffle's whole right side is going to fly off here in a minute. Dick Bergeron. Well, Joe Nemechek won yesterday's Busch Series race, and after that victory, he said if his Winston Cup car was only as good, he could win today. This is a two-tire stop, plus all the fuel that they can jam into this automobile. The tires are on. They're waiting a little bit for the fuel. Want to get every last drop in. Tony Raines takes on right side tires. He started last, but he's been on the lead lap all day. Dave Blaney, who was laps down, also making a stop. And for the most part, Darrell, you can get by with a green flag stop here, two tires, and not go a lap down. I don't think they got all the fuel in that 74 car. I say, as he started to drive away, the gas man started to try to plug another can in. I'm not sure if he did or not. And that could be pretty critical here, because that's the only reason you're pitting is for fuel, not for tires. Looked like there was a community. Looked like there was a problem in the exchange. I'm not sure. I just caught the tail end of it. Tony Stewart back on track, 31 laps down after crash damage. He's in 26th place. But this race is far from over, 63 laps to go. There's his teammate, Bobby Labonte, whose car is also damaged. And here come the leaders, led by Jeff Gordon, who led 27 laps here last October before engine failure put him out. 
two wins in his last 16 Talladega. Mike, Park they seem to be getting spaced out so they could. Yeah, they are. They're coming to pit Leaders road. Leaders are coming to pit road. They got a lot of. I, I noticed they were getting space in between them. Those front cars were like they were all waiting, just getting ready to slow down. Now, Larry, is this too many cars to fit together? That's an awful lot of cars, especially if you're pitting next to one of your neighbors. If you're all spaced out, it's not too bad, but you can lose a lot of time if you start stacking up on top yeah, of each with, other. With as many cars that are out of the race, laps down, I, I doubt if anybody's going to be in a bind here. There's probably going to be some openings here. Matt? The A.R. Hillenburg Jr. is in. Two-tire change. Jeff Clark packs the fuel cell full of fuel. A two-tire change. No adjustments for Jimmy Johnson. Still on the left side tires. He started the day on. Chad Knesset. They may go the distance on their left side they started with. Wow. Two tires for Jeff Gordon. Now, I, I, you, you might be able to do that, but that would really bother me. I'd be afraid that I'd wear that thing out and it would blow out at some point in time. John Andretti, the 43 car, he led that lap right there. I mean, these guys have fought. We've talked about Greg Biffle and his group. This group, along with Kyle Petty, his teammate, the 45 car, but that 43 car, they have fought to stay on the lead lap all day long. Right now, they are first and second in this race, and they pit together. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was the first of the cars that just pitted to come off and pit roads. Mike, look how far out in front he is. I mean, that's how much difference he had in the pits right there. Come out about two seconds ahead of Jeff Gordon. Matt? Well, Mike, to add further on what Darrell was talking about, the two-tire deal on the 48. Now, Chad Knauss told me this morning, last fall, his last stop he took out in left size. The tire wear was so good. He was just saying he was killing himself because he felt like he could have gone the distance on the left sides. So he will probably go, he said, his last stop, only right side tires only. He may go the whole day with the same lefts. And, Matt, everybody will have to make one more pit stop as we see some debris, and it's uh, that's, that's probably Biffle. tape from Biffle. Yeah, <laughs> probably tape from Biffle, but everybody will have to make one more stop, probably about 15 to 20, 25 laps from the end of this thing. And I couldn't imagine anybody thinking about four tires on a stop that late in the race, so it would be just two tires. Well, like I said, I wanted that to fly off at 35 laps, but it didn't. It, it lasted right. a little bit longer than that. You notice Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to keep that thing wound up, running the high line. That way, when that group catches him, they don't just freight train him. Junior trying to become the fourth driver to do the weekend sweep, Saturday, win the Saturday and Sunday race. Ernie Irvin did it in 92. Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Sr. in 93. And Mark Martin did it in 97. Although one of those races was rain postponed to Monday. Still counts as a sweep. Teammates ganging up on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Gordon, the 48 car, and they have the whole string of cars behind them. Ward Burton, the 22, right behind Jimmy Johnson. Five Chevys and a Dodge up in that front pack. Greg Biffle has fallen to 11th place. And this is what we were talking about, Darrell. He has lost that lead pack. You see him there by himself, see those cars going by him in a hurry. Now this is when that arrow will show up. He's out there in clean air. And just looking at the scoring monitor, he's running quite a bit slower, almost a second slower than this lead pack. He was good shape as long as he was in that pack. Steve Burns. And Randy Goss and crew looking at some sheet metal that came off the 16 car of Greg Biffle. They came in, pitted, took two tires, but this piece of sheet metal that came off the car is a problem. They're trying to decide whether or not to bring the 16 back to pit road or wait for a caution. 129 complete, 59 laps to go as the Hendrick Chevys pull out front with Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson in the Aaron's 499. Bill Tendetsky, mechanic, driver, crew chief, relies on himself and his craftsman tools. Bill may never take a checkered flag at Indianapolis or a victory lap at Darlington. But his tools have. And even though Bill doesn't have all 1,800 Craftsman hand tools, the ones he has will race with him this weekend. Craftsman makes anything possible. Papa John's. After 19 years, no question. It's an amazing pizza. Celebrate Papa John's 19th anniversary. Get two large one-topping pizzas for just $11.99. Call us now. We'll be right there. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. My dad taught me two simple rules about car care. To take care of the engine, change the oil. To take care of the fuel system, add STP. 
When your dad is Richard Petty, you tend to listen. You want to know why I ran from Enterprise? Because having the right car can make all the difference. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. You still want to drive the old Aaron's dream machine? You got that right. Well, I've talked to Aaron, and we did the math, and you're going to get your chance. No kidding, when? Yeah, well, suit up, man. No suit! Want your own dream furniture, appliances, or electronics? Do the math. An Aaron's dream lease lets you own faster and for less. Well, there she is, the dream machine. Junior! It's a lawnmower. It's a dream machine lawnmower from Aaron's, DW. I'm keeping my suit. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. The sixth caution flag of the day has just waved for debris in turn number two. A lot of debris cautions, three of them. But remember, we had 27 cars pile up on lap four. They are still racing in various states of repair. So there's going to be a little debris. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you fix them, uh, you know, as best you can, but then you go back out there and the turbulence of the other cars and the wind blowing, you know, around the car whips, rips stuff off of them. Larry, a big break for Greg Biffle, this yeah, caution flag. You saw his crew up there. I mean, he had completely lost the lead graph. In fact, he was about the last car on the lead lap, so this is a big break for him to be able to get to pit road, try to fix that fender. I bet you that 48 takes left side tires now. I'm going to bet you'll stay out because you know what? This don't put them anywhere close to a window. And you know what the safest place is? Out front. You got it. Or out back. You know, I, I think if you're at the back of this lead lap pack, you come in and top off there because that will make you have to take less fuel at the end of this thing. But everybody will still have to make one more stop. Yeah, if the Dodges, in fact, don't are not able to keep up with the Chevrolets as far as gas mileage goes, then they ought to come down and top up. Kevin Harvick threw the dummy toward pit road, pulled back out on the racetrack, but uh, like, as you said, most of the tail end or back part of the lead lap cars are coming in. And what this will mean, if it's a green flag stop at the end, less time spent there because less fuel needed. Yeah, I mean, I would take advantage of this right here. I mean, I just think I would come down and get myself so I could come down, maybe just take gas at the end. Or sheet metal and tape, Steve Burns. Yeah, that's exactly what Greg Biffle needs and lots of it. They're going to go ahead and put fuel in it. But their main reason for stopping, Mike, is to fix the right front damage the, to the right front quarter panel. They're manually just trying to slam it with their hands down and then put the tape on it. Randy Goss saying, take your time. Just fix that right front quarter panel. I believe, Steve, I'd tell them to pound the sides in more and add more tape because it's been pretty quick that way. This is not good for Robbie Gordon, the 31 car, dragging a fuel can away. Uh, it, it comes loose, but it don't matter. He left his pit box with equipment, so that will be a penalty. Robbie Gordon running in 13th Yeah, position. and that's uh, not what we mean when we say gas and go. No. <laughs> He's supposed to leave what's leave, left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Gas, then go. Then go. We have been expecting rain about 3 p.m. Central Time, as we told you at the top of the telecast. And the rain is on. It's on the radar. The skies are lowering, and it's on the way. So they're going to be racing the rain and each other when we come back to Talladega. Dale, I know you still don't want to race our truck, but you got to admit, the new logo makes it look a lot faster. Okay, you can roll the film, John. Look at that baby move. Look at that. It's nothing. Just wait till you see this. Making the impossible possible, Henry Ford had the vision of building cars everyone could afford. 
The innovation to pay his workers $5 a day and the passion to put the world on wheels. Today, we celebrate our 100th anniversary with a special $5 a day lease on Ford Mustang and Ranger. Visit the family of Ford dealers and be a part of who we are today and where we're going tomorrow. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Hey, Tom, what's good? I start with a blend of Monterey and cheddar cheeses and add garlic, little oregano, rosemary. Sounds like a great sandwich. Sandwich? That was just the bread. Subway's new Italian urban cheese. Baked with savory spices topped with Monterey and cheddar cheeses. Subway, he's back! When athletes sweat, they lose more than just water. Gatorade puts back sodium and potassium, proven to replenish and rehydrate athletes better than water. Gatorade. Is it in you? Okay, sweetie. Bye-bye. Can you check on my flight, please? Sure. Call team. Hey, Vanessa, have you finished my brother's birthday card yet? Have now. Now at Radio Shack, get this PCS Vision-enabled color screen phone from Sprint, just $49.99 after $130 in instant savings. Or a Fujifilm digital camera, just $199.99, plus a free photo accessory kit after mail-in rebate. How do you always have the answers to everybody's questions? Radio Shack, you've got questions. We've got answers. The best damn sports show, period. Four idiots sitting around talking sports. Great television. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Bush. Kids it. It's bumper to bumper grinding through Martinsville. The Virginia 500 next Sunday on Fox. fans on our Pepsi fan cam and they may be drenched fans if these severe thunderstorms roll in to Talladega. We'll be back for the green flag. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Dale, thanks for being designated driver. No problem, man. What's up? Make a left up here. Hey, hey, hey Mr. Fisher! Okay, make a quick left and then uh, slow down. Cindy! Cindy! What's going on? Make a right on Havermeyer. What's up? Make a left on Jacks. Dude, where exactly do you live? I'll right back by the bar. Hey, Bobby! Hey! TGI Fridays introduces new sizzling chicken and cheese. Hey! Dig into Friday's delicious marinated chicken over melted cheeses sautéed vegetables, and a side of our signature mashed potatoes, all on one sizzling skillet. Friday's new sizzling chicken and cheese for just $8.99. Come get a taste of our new bold flavor. Welcome back to the Haviland 500 and checking the Haviland running order. The Haviland 42 car is moving up. Yeah, boy, take a look at that Haviland Speedo and Haviland Tack on McMurray's ride. That's time to slap with a Haviland stopwatch. That Haviland temperature gauge says his engine's running good. It's time to pay some bills. Folks, this race is brought to you by, uh... Haviland Motor Oil. Yep, now back to racing. I tell you what, it's easy to see why Jamie's doing so well. And thanks for these beautiful overhead shots from the Haviland Blimps. You know, Kenny, thanks to you and Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner, I've made some great new friends in racing. Last night, Jeff Hammond took me to a movie. I guess you didn't take your Stacker 2 today, did you? But nobody compares to my new best friend, Tony Stewart. Hey, Big Show. There's room for one more. Yeah. <laughs> Wait! Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. Stacker 2 at Bedger Free. Because you never know when you're going to need it. Who said Kenny can't run fast? Mark and Karen have twins. They use their Discover card because it pays them for the things they buy. 
So far, they've earned a cash back bonus award of $140. It's money they use to pay for a special night out. And an emergency 24 pack. Discover card. Why not get paid for the things you buy anyway? The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. By Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. By TGI Fridays, enjoy our sizzling chicken and cheese for just $8.99. And by Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's, improving home improvement. Big crowd on hand at Talladega as Jeff Gordon leads his Hendrick Chevy teammate Jimmy Johnson, Ward Burton, Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the front five. Dale Jarrett is in 11th place. You're working better up high or down low or anywhere I can help you the most? I mean, I'm not working very good anywhere. Uh, car gets to the outside of me. I, it just about stops this thing. Uh, uh, probably I'll pick up a little bit more speed uh, if I can get up on the, the upper side and go from there. That's the two teammates trying to work together there. Uh, Dale Jarrett and uh, Elliot Sadler. They're, they're talking to each other about can they help each other. Right now they're sitting there together in 11th and 12th place. And I don't believe a Ford has... Yeah, Matt Kenseth led under the green flag. He's the one Ford to lead this race under green. And right now he's by far the highest running forward sitting in sixth place behind leader Jeff Gordon. Well, let me tell you, I just always think back to Daytona, and I never heard anything about Matt Kenseth or uh, Kurt Busch or Mark Martin or any of them until the end of the day. And when they did the rundown, there they were. They'll restart with 51 laps to go. That will include at least one more pit stop for everybody, even the cars that pitted that time, even the cars that stayed out that time. 19 cars on the lead lap. One more pit stop. Dick Bergeron on strategy. Boy, and there's been a lot of stuff going on in the pits. Sterling Marlin came in early in that caution period, put fuel only in his car. Kevin Harvick's team decided that they were going to do what everybody else up front did. They had plenty of fuel. Everybody, they decided to stay out, so they decided to stay out, too. Joe Nimichek came in on the last lap before the green flag and topped off. Nimichek riding 16th now. He was 15th before he loaded that thing up with gas, Mike. And the caution, a big break, Darrell, for Tony Raines. You were right. They didn't get it full of fuel when he stopped under green. Yeah, there was a little problem on the exchange between the two cans, and uh, the car drove away with the guy holding the gas can. So. And when you only have 13 and a half gallons to begin with, you have to be full every time you come to pit road. And, yeah, Dick, the way I see it, the cars that stayed out that pitted on lap 126, we, if it stays green, when they get in, they're going to have to have about nine and a half gallons of fuel to make it to the end. The cars that just pitted then, about seven gallons. That could be a couple of seconds difference in the pit stop. Yeah, I think I, I'd come down that time and try to get myself in a position so I could do as little as possible when I got to come in and earn the green if it does happen. Kevin Harvick up the inside by himself, trying to wrest the lead from Jeff Gordon. I mean, everybody is right up against the wall in that top lane. Uh, Kenny Wallace in the 23, he looks like he's about five car lengths back from Kevin Harvick, but that group's coming pretty fast. Harvick's had a good run all day. He's been right there at the front, the two Hendrick cars, and, of course, there's Dale Jr. Ward Burton's had a good car all day. Matt Kenseth has. <laughs> Taylor Earnhardt Jr., he takes no mercy on anybody's rear bumper. I'm sure that if you ask him, he was trying to help him. I'm just not sure what he's trying to help them do. <laughs> well, still, they're three wide in the middle of this pack. Little has changed since the way they were racing when they dropped the green flag. See, Sterling Marlin in the 40 car right there. He's leading that group. A lot of them decided to come to pit road and top off, like Dale Jarrett in 88. Falls in behind Kevin Harvick and his teammate, Elliot Sadler. See, that's what's happened to you. You're going down there. You think everybody's happy. You know, everybody's lined up right behind you. Next thing, somebody dives the inside, puts you in the middle. Jeannie? Well, earlier we were eavesdropping on the conversation between the 38 and the 88. For the 88, he has been fighting damage to that left rear fender most of the day. They actually put some sheet metal on it, and they found out the car ran worse with it on, so they took another pit stop to take it off. Dale Jarrett saying anytime he gets close to a car in front of him, the temperature goes up, so he needs to be in clean air. And, of course, we saw where 
Dale Jarrett was hit in the back by Tony Stewart in that very first wreck of the day. Seen that before. Fixed a car and it didn't run as good. It's like, I don't know what you fix, but unfix it. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, you get something hanging out there in the way. Clear, clear. All clear, both sides. All clear. What did you see, Junior? I mean, he just sliced out from behind uh, Kevin Harvick. That's the way you have to drive, though. When there's a crack there, you got to get in it. You can't wait. Because it won't be there long. It won't be there very long, and they'll take it away from you. Look at Greg Biffle in the 16 car. I believe they've made the repairs of that fender. He's back up there digging again. He's in seventh position. At least the last time they came by the start finish line, he was. Well, Dale Jr. is now beating on the back of uh, Ward Burton over there, trying to bump him to the front. And he did. Look, see what that does? He gave him a big shot about halfway down the back, and, uh, and Ward Burton took off. But so did the inside line. And now Jr. has to fight with Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy Johnson just barely, he did what he needed to do. He filled that hole before it was filled. He was caught in the middle just for a second there, the 48 car. There's Warden Jr. They're working pretty good together right now. Ward Burton trying to take the lead. Did it. Led that lap. Dale Jr. says, that gummit. I gave him a push, and he got the lead and left me hanging back here. Come back here. Ward Burton, who started racing late models in South Boston, Virginia, followed by his younger brother, Jeff. They both moved up to the Bush Series and then to Winston Cup, where they've both seen considerable success. Well, it's good for Bill Davis. See, both these cars, he and Kenny Wallace, both up there in the top ten, and uh, Ward leading the race. Was Ward won the Daytona 500, you know, so he knows how to win these restrictor plate races. And we have a long way to go, Darrell, but yeah, when you look at Bill Davis racing, Ward Burton in the 22, his teammate Kenny Wallace in the 23, seven races this year, between the two of them, only one top 10 finish. Junior just got up against Jeff Gordon's rear bumper and, and then, then sliced to the and inside. And then just sliced right out from behind him wow. and, and got, the, got the advantage. And the thing about it, he may beat on other people's rear bumpers. It's, when he's out like this, they can't get to him to beat on his rear, rear bumper almost. Steve Burns. With Randy Goss, Greg Biffle's crew chief. Randy, she doesn't look pretty, but she's hanging in there. Yeah, she's pretty ugly. I'm just really proud of the Granger crew, Matt. They're like, they've been like the dirty dozen today that we just keep bringing a, a junker in. You know, the fender's blowing off at these speeds, and they just keep fixing it. They had to set the toe. Uh, we, we had uh, the right front was bent real bad in that first wreck, so just really proud of the Granger crew. Well, Randy Goss and his team have worked harder than any lead lap crew today. And he should be proud of him. He should be proud of his driver, too. I mean, he's out there doing everything he can. He's uh, He gets me up off my seat a lot, I know that, but uh, he's hanging right in there with that car. Darrell Jr. sliced to the bottom end of the lead, but here comes the high groove, and it's working once again. Ward Burton in the 22 getting help from two of the Hendrick cars. The other Hendrick car, Jimmy Johnson, he is pushing Matt Kenseth in the 17 right now down the back stretch. And everybody here knows Dale Jr. is going for four wins in a row here. They're not going to help him do that. It's not like they want to see him do it. If anything, they want to be like the team that knocks you out of the final four. Last Winston Cup driver to win four in a row, Bill Elliott at Michigan, 1985 and 1986. Won four in a row. Yeah, and I mean, I look at the top 10 right now. I mean, everybody up in that top 10, other than Matt Kenseth, what they're looking for, they need a win this year. They need to win a race. Junior ekes out a bit of a lead. 0.23 seconds in the Aaron's 499. Spend years making a name for yourself. When you're known by your number, that's fuel for the soul. She's a real beauty. Oh, I tell you, it'd be a shame if something would have happened to her. What could happen? What could happen? What could happen? Things. Things? Things. I want to think about getting some protection. 
If you want protection, you want the Prestone family and the three rainstorm durability of Prestone Tire Shine. Smart dog. Lucky dog. Prestone protection, inside and out. You know, we're never in the same place at the same time. No, not really. So we need a plan that allows us to talk, you know, as much as we want, all the time, all the whenever time. we want. And, and then no charge. charge. With Singular's Family Talk plan, call each other for free with unlimited mobile-to-mobile -mobile calling. Get 5,000 night and weekend minutes to share, up to three additional lines, and up to four free phones. We call it the Conley Brothers. What's up? What's up? What's, What's up, up plan? plan? Come in and find out how Singular fits you best. Every driver in NASCAR is a unique individual. Each driver has a distinct style, his own approach to every situation. But no driver is really alone. Each of us has a sponsor and a crew backing us up. I'm lucky enough to be part of one of the greatest teams in the business. Oh sure, we're competitive, but Steve and Dale Jr. are friends, almost family. You know, I can't think of hardly anything I'd change. Nothing like a good chicken sandwich, and pretty soon you'll be making sandwiches for me. Come on to my house, my house will come on. When you make making not a sauce, you got to have red, ripe tomatoes with mozzarella. Oh, bellissima. Back for a limited time, the Italian chicken sandwich at Burger King. Crispy all-white meat chicken, rich marinara sauce, and mozzarella cheese. Or have it your way and choose the original chicken sandwich only at Burger King. Come on to my house. With a week before their weddings, the Married by America couples head to Vegas. Vegas! Where the guys throw a bachelor party, but while one groom stays loyal... But he didn't want to do it. ...the other goes too far. I'm not going to let people disrespect me. I have never put up with it, and I never will. An all-new Married by America at 9, 8 Central, Fox, Monday. Hi, this is Todd Bodine, driver of the National Guard Ford. Just want to say hey to all the troops. We're thinking about you and we're praying for you to come home safe. Hoo-ah! All of us at Fox Sports support our troops abroad and welcome all of you watching on American Forces TV Network. Maybe some debris in the tri-oval as we close in on 40 laps to go. And we're getting close to the window in which if you made a pit stop, you could go to the checkered flag. Jeff Hammond. And right now, guys, what's going to really be interesting, in my opinion, is trying to make that pit stop being out front, staying out front, if it comes on a, on a green flag, uh, come down pit road, what's going to be interesting is right now, the way Dale Earnhardt is, I believe he's got a definite advantage over most of these guys because, again, he can pick his uh, point of coming in. He knows he's got to be careful not to flat spot those tires. But any time that you can be out front and stay out front at Talladega, you've got a definite advantage. Right, Larry McReynolds? Yeah, and I mean, Jeff, I'm sure what's going on right now in the crew chief's minds on pit road, I mean, you're already planning for that. You're already trying to figure, I talked earlier about which cars would need how many gallons of fuel. You're trying to figure out how long you need to be there. You don't want to be there any longer, but you want to make sure you get enough fuel in that. Plus, you need partners. If you're going to fuel only, you need people that's going to do that. If you're going to do two right side tires, you need people that's going to do that with you. And then when it gets close to it, talking to that driver. Don't slide the tires and don't speed down pit road. That'd and, kill the day. And another guy that you're going to be talking to is your gas man to make sure you got to get hooked up. You've got to run with that race car. We've got to get all the gas we can in it as fast as possible. But now, if you did not stop under the last caution and top off, have you dug yourself a hole if you have to now pit under green? Well, again, yeah, everybody's going to have to pit under green, even if you topped off. So that's the thing. But the guys that topped off, might less time there. But you need people that's going to be with you. You can't be out there by yourself. Larry, one of the things I think we need to point out, too, to dump about 11 gallons of gas into one of these cars, it takes about seven seconds, six and a half to seven seconds. So if you can get it down to where you can take less than a can, that's going to be critical right there. And again, for the crew chief to be able to count that out, I've done it many times, is for that driver to hit his mark, the gas man to hook up, to be able to make that count of 1,001, 1,002, to be able to tell that driver at a certain time to go ahead and go in the reaction time to make sure you get all you can in it to make it to the finish. Yeah, you don't need that gas man to have to chase that race car down because that's precious seconds. Timed pit stops long, a staple of IndyCar racing in Formula One. And with 37 laps to go... Biffo, Biffo whoa. just cut it right front down or something. He just dove to the inside. Some of that sheet metal may have gotten down on his tire. Yeah, boys, coming in. He's got a right front tire down, I believe. 
But you know what? If that's all it is, it happened at an opportune place because he was coming off turn four. We know right now if they get tires and fuel in that car, if that's all it is, it then he could go the distance. That tire was moving around. It looked like, like that's something's what I was going to say, like it had a loose tire rod yeah. or something. Yeah, like something's broke. Uh, yeah, it did. It broke something. Yep. Biffle's in 19th place, last car on the lead lap. And not going to stay there. Uh, you can see them right there. They know they have more problems than just the tire well, down. That's but he did a whale of a job hanging on to that thing when that, the way that wheel was wobbling around. That's a shame, Steve Burns. What is the problem? Larry, Larry, what we do know is we heard Greg Biffle say just a second ago, I think something broke. And now they're saying it's the ball joint on the lower control arm, ball joint. I mean, when you beat and bang these things that much, something's finally going to break. And that's probably why they had to adjust the toe out. And now it finally broke. That's a shame, though. Regardless, you got to tip your hat to Randy Goss. And, and what he probably did in one of those wrecks is bent that ball joint. And I tell you, a car with a bent ball joint on a track like this is mean to drive. It is very unpredictable. I think that's one reason why he was kind of wobbling around at times the way he was. So now, 18 cars remain on the lead lap with 35 laps to go and pit stops coming up. To a driver, fear isn't going full wide into a turn. Fear isn't driving into a cloud of smoke at 200 miles per hour. Fears not getting sideways an inch from the wall. That's because Ford dominated, dominated, dominated last year's Cup Series with seven Fords finishing in the top ten. Top ten. Seven Fords. So fear in the racing world is looking in the rearview mirror and seeing one of us. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Hey, Tony, congratulations on your NASCAR championship. Hey, Lance, great job winning four straight Tour de France titles. By the way, is it true that you, uh, you know, shave your legs before a race? Sure. It makes me faster. Less wind resistance? Actually, no. Shaving your legs stimulates nerve endings under the skin. That activates neurons in the brain, creating a surge of adrenaline. So you're faster. Really? Let's do pity next. Yeah. Now this here, that's the drain plug. It lets the oil drain out into the pan. Remember, she's got a lot of mileage on her, but one day, she'll be all yours. Help keep the family car in the family with Valvoline's Max Life. Max Life, the first motor oil specially formulated to recondition used seals to help prevent leaks, helping your higher mileage engine run for a long, long time. After our naps, we'll flush the radiator. Now there's an entire line of Max Life products that'll help keep your higher mileage car around for a long time. Winning the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship feels pretty good. Sweating doesn't. That's why you use Red Zone from Old Spice. It's the strongest stuff you can get, made just for guys. It absorbs in and helps stop sweat. And if you try it and don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. Hey, that's how I stay cool on the track. Well, maybe there's one other way. What's good? Sam? Subway's new Italian herb and cheese. The taste will bring you to your knees. Great bread makes a sandwich a true taste delight. You'll see for yourself with just one bite. Subway, eat fresh! Is razor burn ruining your morning? The Extreme 3 from Schick balances three blades on a central pivot for a close, comfortable shave. The Extreme 3. Get close, not burned. The Aaron's 499 on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. By Subway, fresh made sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. And by Ford, if you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. 32 laps, including one pit stop to go in the Aaron's 499 on the track. They're wheeling at over 185 miles an hour, but down on pit road, they're dealing. Dick Bergeron. The radios are crackling for sure. Richard Childress, who owns Happy Harvick's car, just came on the radio, and basically it sounds like he's got a deal with Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. They're going to pit now. All three of those cars are going to come in. Hendrick cars pitting with Childress cars. I, I think we re uh, realized that uh, Daytona. There's no love lost now between DEI and Childress Racing. 
And I think they want to dethrone that eight car from the super speedway dominance he's had if they can. And you know, I, I like that strategy, Darrell. Get on pit road now. We know we're in that window. There might not be that many cars on pit road if we come on and get in there in the next lap or two. We know we can go the distance from here, and we won't go a lap here down. They come. Here they come right now. Because as we pointed out, at Talladega, you can pit under green without losing a lap if you're one of those lead cars. See Sterling Marlin in the 40 car coming with them. Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon's teammate in the 25 as well. And Terry Labonte, all Terry the Labonte. Hendrick cars are in. And the two children's cars along with Sterling Marlin. So what does that tell you? The three, the two other dominant Chevrolet teams are all coming in together. <laughs> Matt? A chassis adjustment a little bit tight. They topped them off of fuel. No tires, just gas only for the 48. And of the seven cars, Matt, that pitted, and Robbie Gordon's not getting up to speed very good, but he, he was pitted so far down pit road. Mike, we and I talked about that earlier. You lose a lot of that speed leaving pit road. Everybody fuel only. Jeff Gordon didn't get out either, very well either. He was struggling to get going. And the reason he's in the very end pit, Darrell, that's the reason I don't like those pits. They're great for caution stops, but you lose the momentum leaving pit road when on a green flag stop. Dick Bergman. And, Larry, the way you were talking about how a driver had to absolutely hit his marks coming in, Happy Harvick didn't do that. He went further in his pit box than he should have. Didn't go over the line. That was okay. But fuel man Brian Englehart had to take several steps forward to get the fuel can into the receptacle. As a result, Harvick went out last of all those cars. Yeah, I mean, your fuel man's chasing the car with about 80 pounds of fuel, 11 gallons in that can. And there you see, that's extra steps. That was a couple of seconds that they lost right there on pit road. Right now, he's going on the crew chief's call when the crew chief feels like enough fuel's in that car to go. Yeah, the thing wound it up sounded like John Force. Oh, yeah. You don't want to stall it with those high gears, though. No, that sir. cost even more seconds. But I didn't... I, I mean, I think the gas man could have done a little bit better job of being after the car. I don't blame it all on the driver. I'll take up for the driver a little bit there. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Labonte's car has been overheating, so he's been on the track, he's been in the pits or behind the wall to, to fill it back up with water, trying to get to the finish. He's 32nd, 70 laps down, but trying to finish the day. And of course, right now, we know we have a lot more leaders coming to pit road. That's not going to be good, all that water on pit road. If I'm part of one Lord, of those crews, we'll be coming in with them. I'm down there helping them dry this water up. And the Ward Burton, the 22 car, he's right near that pit box that Bobby Labonte was in. the rest of them to pit road. I'd say most of them will do the same thing, probably fuel only. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Ward Burton, Elliott Sadler, Jeannie. Every single head of the 22 pit turned to the left to watch the 24 and the 48 go. What were they going to do? That was the decision. Ward wanted to do the same thing. So Ward Burton taking fuel only. Right Deep. side tires only for Matt Kessler, Jeannie. Benji Grubb, the gas man, getting the gas ball. Let's go to Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. only needed about five seconds of fuel. Dale Jarrett becomes the 15th different leader of this race as he has not yet made his pit stop. And Daryl Matt Kenseth, out of all those cars, he's about the only one that changed tires. And here comes the leaders, the Hendrick cars, Sterling Marlin, Kevin Harvick. They are passing these guys right now with quite a head of steam. I think he's going to come out of this looking pretty good. It's Terry Labonte. Uh, he's, caught his, he's caught himself up into this uh, crowd here when they, everything cycles through. I just think that first group, as we see Dale Jarrett and 88 car come to pit road, I think the first group had a better shot going, getting on and off pit road because less cars. It's the 48 and the 5. Sam was in between him and the 24. Great, great pit stop on his part. And after all that, they flow right back together again. Well, that's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> Dale Jarrett, he's coming off pit road right now with Jeremy Mayfield and Mark Martin. Laps down, leaders are exiting the trial right now. And Jimmy Johnson goes for and takes the lead. Tell you what, Kenny Wallace in the 23 car, his group did a good job of getting him off pit road. He's one of those cars I talked about earlier, pitted right at the entrance. That way he could have that speed built up all the way toward the end of pit road. Oh, by the way. In the top five or six here now, we got Terry Labonte, Bill Elliott, and uh, Dale Jarrett right down here. Those guys that were laying back there for a while, they're starting to 
turn it up just a notch. Experience. Experience. Now, Elliot Sadler right here, we're, we're getting a confirmation that he is our leader of the race. But these guys are coming. He has no help whatsoever. He's what somewhat a little bit of a sitting duck. Well, they're not going to show him any respect, I can tell you when this. He might be it. the leader, but guess what? This is the only place where sometimes it don't pay to have the great pit stop and end up by yourself. And there you see him pulling to the inside right now. They're just going to freight train him. There's over a second difference in the closing speed right there, which is several miles an hour, so they're going to zap him pretty good. 25 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson has gone back to the front of the Aaron's 499. The number 99 Aaron's Dream Machine means a lot to me. It's a great car that represents a great company. It stands for the fact that for just $99 a month, you can own an Aaron's Dream product. So do the math. You'll own it sooner and for less money when you shop at Aaron's. Dream products at dream prices? Now, I like that. Yeah. So let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. Now, let's do my math. Driving plus Dream Machine equals DW. You just won't quit, will you? Senseless garage door destruction. A problem no more thanks to the twice as fast accelerator. Only from Genie. It's a beast that Applebee's on me on my own. Can't sit down, but make my mouth go gooey. Slice it up, can't get enough of Applebee's. Eating good in the neighborhood. Recently, all the winners of the Car and Driver Best Pickup Award got together for a little reunion. It's good to see everyone again. Silverado, the three-time winner, the only winner of Car and Driver's Best Pickup Award. Silverado, a truck from Chevy. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. So this is the living room, plasma TV. The awesome sound system! Toast. The hot tub. The grill. Oh, yeah. Did I mention the driveway? Check out Visa.com to learn how you and three friends could win the ultimate NASCAR experience. Stay in a luxury RV, get a hot lap with Rusty Wallace or Kurt Busch, and tour the pits. Visa, if you love NASCAR... These are my neighbors. They're kind of noisy. It's everywhere you want to be. Where'd you get that shirt? It's huge. It was my own boyfriend. It must have been huge. He was. Why don't you change into one of mine? Nah, yours are kind of small. So? Well, small ones are okay. Huge ones just feel better. You have the tiniest little hands. Pit stops are done for these teams and for NASCAR on Fox. We're going to carry you through the checkered flag. 18 cars on the lead lap. There'll be 21 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson leading Dale Earnhardt Jr., Terry Labonte, Joe, uh, Jeff Gordon, Joe Nemechek. Five Chevys in front of Sterling Marlins Dodge. Four Hendrick cars right there out of the top five. In fact, when they crossed the line that time, the Hendrick cars came up on the scoring system one through four. I don't know where Rick Hendrick is, but I'm sure he's smiling right now. He's down there. Especially when you consider the problems they had here in October. Every Hendrick engine had a problem. But that's how you get better. They found something, made more power. The things were fast, but they blew up. They went home and fixed it. How about our point leader, Steve Burns? Interesting conversation on the radio, Mike Joy. Crew Chief Robbie Riser just told Matt Kenseth, we, I may have just cost you the race. We should not have put on right side tires. We only needed six seconds worth of fuel. And again, Steve, I, best I could tell, looking down pit road, we don't have the greatest view. He was the only leader that changed tires. I totally disagree. I think if, if he's that, he's right there with the leaders, he's got fresher tires, that might pay off. It just might pay off. Here are the times that the lead cars spent stopped in their pits. That's what moved Joe Nemechek up into that top five and got Terry Labonte right there. 
Just tr tr as a driver, trust me, when you can put tires on my car and get me back out in that shape right there, I'm a happy camper. Tell you what, it is so good. Terry Labonte in that five car. See him up <laughs> battling for the He's lead. He's going for the lead, baby. Yes, he is. Against his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. And he has help from his two teammates behind him. Now his other teammate slides yeah. back in front of him. Come on over here. Where you been? Don't leave me hanging out here. Tony's not happy. And we've talked about team racing before. In Formula One, sometimes a driver will be waved aside so that his teammate can win. Can't happen here. Because if Dale Jr. says, come on, push me, help me. In Formula One, each team's two cars are required to be painted alike and have exactly the same <laughs> sponsors. Here, every driver has different sponsors to answer to. There's no team orders here. No, there isn't. But what Dale Jr. is looking for is somebody to help him because everybody else is working against him. But, Darrell, he's waving to the other beer car there. I'm I'm pretty sure in saying Sterling Marlin's probably bending the firewall right now with that gas pedal. Yeah, and I think Ward Burton's right there as well. So those guys have run well together throughout the day. Uh, but Junior's going to have to have some help to overhaul these Hendrick cars. And on the low groove, those Hendrick Chevys are lined up tightly one through four. You know, Daryl, I'm a lot like you. I'm not a big fan of these smaller fuel cells, but it's amazing these green flag stops, how they were apart. Now look at them. They're all back together again. Yeah, I, I mean, they can run 13-gallon fuel cells if they want to. I don't see where it did anything. It just meant you had to make more pit stops. And, and But if that's what they want to do, that's okay. It just, just seems like the cars are on pit lane a lot more than they need to be. If you joined us late, a lap four crash took out 27 cars. Two cautions for debris, then Michael Waltrip spun into Jeremy Mayfield. Then Tony Stewart collided with Greg Biffle and Kurt Busch. A final debris caution at lap 132. And now we have 17 laps to go when they cross the line. Chevy's up front. Get out, block that eight, all of us. Believe me, bud, they're trying. Johnson went up to block, didn't work. He well, went up to block, and then Dale Earnhardt Jr. shot the gap. Oh, got the momentum, but the 40 is with you up top. I see you all. See, he worked That's the deal. He, he got Sterling to help him. Oh, look at the back of Johnson's car. A lot of damage that left rear quarter. That did not pay off at all for him. I think that's where Junior sliced across the back. Got lost our guy here. Still two by two, two by two. And that uh, fender out in the wind is like got to be like a parachute. I don't think Jimmy Johnson's real happy with Dale Junior right there. He says, "Hey, bud, you forced your way around me, and uh, but that that's the restrictor plate racing. You just got to live with that." You heard Ty Norris, Dale Earnhardt Junior. spotter, say we lost our partner. Sterling Marlin has been kicked all the way back to about 12th in the 40 car. But you also heard him say we got to we got to work together, keep that eight car back. <laughs> Didn't work. Terry Labonte right, running right in Dale Junior.'s tire tracks. He is third by a nose to Jimmy Johnson, but he has Jeff Gordon right behind him. Now this is when Dale Junior.'s car seems like it always is just amazes me. He can get all those cars lined up behind him, but he can sit there and run in front of those guys. And just lead them. He just kind of eases one side to the other. Whoever, whichever line starts to come up close to him, he'll pull down in front of them. Be 15 laps to go this time, but Daryl, I don't look for him to come much off the bottom of that racetrack probably in these final laps. But I do have to say that the Hendrick crowd has done an incredibly good job of closing the competition gap, the competitive gap between uh, themselves and the eight car. And a lot of that credit has to go to Randy Dorton and his engine shop because they had to overcome not only a speed differential, but a reliability problem here last October. I can't believe Jimmy Johnson is still running right with him with that fender catching the breeze. And he got a heck of a runoff turn, too, and got a little bit of help. But, yeah, Mike, you're right. Look at it. We can see it from here. It's like a big old parachute hanging out behind that left rear tire. Yeah, he'd probably wish somebody would kind of run into it and knock it back in. Better be careful what you wish for. Right. You might get it. You might get that. Boy, can't you just, I mean, do y'all feel it? Are y'all, do y'all feel it like I do? I know being out there, the intensity, and all of a sudden, guys that were nice to you but earlier in the day are not so kind anymore. And you know why? That crew chief just told them, 15 to go, do what you got to do. Dale Jr. may have had an easy time getting to the front, but he is not getting away.
I tell you, so much work has paid off on pit road. I look at Ricky Craven right there in the 32 car. Wasn't that many laps ago? They were making repairs on his car on pit road. Here he is back in the top 10, Jeff Hammond. That's right. And uh, you're talking about pit road. A guy who didn't have a good day on pit road or at last pit stop was Kevin Harvick. He was up there fighting for the lead. Now he finds himself back here basically fighting for his life back in 14, trying to get back to the front with 14 laps to go. We documented how much that pit stop probably cost him, but DW, two right side tires. He's coming on there, Matt Kenseth, in that 17 car. I like fresh tires, baby. And it's not that it helps the speed here, helps you maneuver that race car. Just a little more grip. Makes me feel better. Then Mr. Feel Goods will fix you right up. 17 lead lap cars in that pack. Tony Raines has lost the draft, but remains on the lead lap. 13 to go. Here comes Johnson again. He's got a good run on the outside of Junior and takes the lead. And Kyle Petty in the 45 car. He was pulling a group on the high side with him. And look at it. I, it likes that parachute right now. What is that commercial where the guy pulls up to the stoplight in the drag car and he says, bet you ain't got one of these? That's, right. <laughs> That's what Johnson looks like. Bet you ain't got one of these. <laughs> Take that to the wind tunnel and, and see what the numbers are. Unbelievable. He would be saying right now, don't fix it. Dale Jr. and his running mate. The problem is they're side by side. Ward Burton has been probably the best friend that Dale Jr.'s had in quite a while. The shame of this, Darrell, is you could finish this race eight tenths of a second behind the leader and be 17th. The way today's gone, I'll take it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Craven in the 32 car. He has a new friend there, Ricky Craven. Terry Labonte in the five car right behind him. Now those two Hendrick cars running behind Ricky Craven, Labonte and Gordon. Jimmy Johnson climbs the hill. Ward Burton had a look in between. Thinks better of it. I know Childress uh, engine in that Pontiac there running too bad there. He's running real good. Tide, roll tide in Alabama is a good thing. 11 laps to go this time. 11 laps to settle it. Nemechek dropping back on the inside. May be trouble, but for the lead, Johnson outside of Junior once again. And Ward Burton in the 22, he is just shoving Jimmy Johnson off turn two. And Joe Nemechek has a problem. He has lost the lead draft and is slow on the back stretch. You know, Dale Jr. has got to be looking over at Ward Burton and saying, five, hey, man, on the bottom. I thought you and I were going to work together. Got the 17 at his teammate, the 23. Jimmy Johnson, right now, he's doing what Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's trying to figure out which one of those lines are fixing the move. And who can help me most? Nobody. He's going to split the two lines. And What's the reason what? is 10 laps to go. That's what you do. You get, you just kind of let one side pull up a little, then you pull down, let block that side. Just kind of play. The, I like to call it working both sides of the street because you're really just trying to keep everybody behind you. And right now they're catching a pack of four cars that's laps down, but definitely those cars are, are poking a hole in there for this group. Jimmy Johnson has five restrictor place plate starts. His best finish third at Daytona this February. Larry, why did you pick him today? Well, I watched him in practice yesterday. He led a practice session for about 15 or so laps. Then he dropped to the pack of about 18 cars to see if he could work his way back up there. Look at Ward Burton in that 22 car. He wants to lead here as they come for nine laps to go. But he was good out front, Mike, and he was good back in the pack. But Ward Burton has now taken the outside line to the front. He's brought Matt Kenseth with him, Dale Jr., and Kenny Wallace. Matt. Well, to further add on Jimmy Johnson's drafting prowess, it actually began two years ago. He went to the Jeff Gordon Drafting School. During Speed Weeks 2001, he and young Ricky Hendrick went to Jeff's Motor Coach. They pulled all their cell phones out on the kitchen table, and Jeff spent over an hour showing, with the use of the cell phones, how you draft, how you manipulate the air for your advantage, and how to make it a disadvantage for somebody else. It's certainly paying off today. Oh, but now he's really got to get some help. Ricky Craven's trying to push him along, but the outside line went. And you're riding with Kenny Wallace. I just noticed a second ago when we were riding with Kenny Wallace, Dale Earnhardt Jr., his arms are going to be tired, not from driving that race car, but from waving to people. Stay behind me. Help me. And don't forget, remember at Daytona when we had an in-car camera in Jimmy Johnson's car, and he kept trying to figure out, he said, I can get in front, but I can't stay there. Right. And then Jeff Gordon, and he were trying to help him. He was trying to help him figure out what to do. Looks like they figured it out. He learned a lot. Well, 
But as Kenny Wallace found when he chased Dale Earnhardt here a couple of years ago, when you follow the best car, the best you can do is second place. And he don't want second place. Kenny Wallace needs to win a race. That's kind of, it's like my brother said once, why didn't you pass him? He said, because his car's faster than mine. <laughs> Elliot Sadler is still in this despite crash damage early. He's in ninth place. He is the second Ford in this race. Matt Kenseth is fifth, the first one. It's Chevy Dodge Pontiac at the front last time by when they come around. But well, the 17 car got all the way up to fourth, got in the wrong line just like Dale Jr. did, and they both went backwards. Now they're working together. Seven laps to go as they come through the trioval and down to the stripe, which is past pit road, down to turn one, and Ward Burton is all but pushing Jimmy Johnson, trying to get away. Well, that's what he was doing with Earnhardt Jr. earlier today, uh, is when they went to the front and stayed there. Ward's really doing a good job today of helping people. Hopefully it'll pay off for him. We're on the verge of having about a five-car breakaway, single file, because back there, Sterler Marlin, that group, they're starting to run side by side. But if they'll ever get lined up, which they did just then, they'll run back up there. Not a bad thing to get back. If you can get people to work with you, you get a huge run, and you might be able to blow right by some of those cats. Joe Nemechek, black flagged. He's having engine trouble, and he's been ordered to the pits. Going to be six laps to go now, as they come around. Bad news is when they get single file, it's hard to pass. When they were up there racing like three and two and three wide, you might be able to make a pass. But when they get single file, it gets difficult. Lap cars will help Jimmy Johnson. He'll sniff off those lap cars, catch a little bit of draft, and then work his way around them. He ducked down just for a second just to get that little bit of help. Here comes Junior. He's got to trying to get up behind Kenseth. He can't hit him in the rear bumper because he done knocked it off. Ricky Craven went down for a second <laughs> to try to block, but he knew the hole was already filled. He hit him be, anyway. He got, good thing he got a 13-gallon fuel cell in that thing, or he'd have it slammed closed up. That has knotted the field. It's brought the second pack right back to the leaders. Yeah, look at Sterling Marlin in the 40 car. He'd lost his draft just about a lap and a half ago. Kenseth got up to second, but at what price? We're all but four wide as they come to the line. Five laps to go. And boy, Sterling Marlin just slid in front of Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. Boy, here comes Kenseth's 48 car. Jimmy Johnson tried to block him, but couldn't do it. I think Dale Jr. is going to go with Kenseth. Jimmy Johnson has no help on the outside. He's Man. pushing him again. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just shoving Matt Kenseth. Boy, Still. and Kenseth should not open up the bottom there. I guess that slow car may have caused it. Instead of butt, it ought to say bam on the hood of that Chevrolet because that's what he's doing to Matt Kenseth. Look at Jimmy Johnson, though. He's getting some help now from that outside line. Back to Ward Burton helping him off, off into turn three. Ward Burton and 15 of his closest friends. Goodness. Friends? I don't think there's no friends. They are for the moment. The, All right, white, the white hasn't waved yet. Here comes Junior and Kenseth again trying to work together. Ward and uh, Jimmy Johnson trying to work together. What do you see, Jeff? Right now, I've been watching my buddy old Kevin Harvick right there. Talked about him back here a little while ago. He's 14th. Now he's clawed his way back up there, beating and banging. He's now back up there in the top 10, oh. almost the top five. And I mean, he's really making a strong run right oh. there behind Ricky Craven. Earnhardt Jr. just knocked the back bumper cover off of Matt Kenseth. Yeah, what, what happened was, oh boy. What happened was that slow car got in their way and he tried to shoot him by him before they got to the turn. Hard to counsel patience when there's just four laps to go. I mean, look at them here. They're five and six wide down the back stretch. But what you don't realize is that they're, they're banging into each other at 190 miles an hour. Here comes Junior. He's got to run. Kenseth tried to oh, close him oh, off. Oh, oh, the line. That's going to be borderline, guys. That's going to be borderline. Poor Matt Kenseth is getting pushed by everybody. And he and Jimmy Johnson got shuffled back in all that. Boy, I don't know. That was a pass under the line. I don't know what we're going to see here. The question will be whether or not they deem he was forced down below the line. It would be very unpopular to black flag him. Three to go. Juniors fought his way to the front, and they're all knotted up from fourth on back. And look who's running second. <laughs> Elliot Sadler. Where did he come from? Oh. Well, if I'm Jimmy Johnson right now, I'm hot. Not pushing him, so they're going to have some momentum here in just a second. I'll let you know. Johnson trying to come back on the outside. Kent's is the guy I think you got to keep an eye on, Larry. I, I tell you, he was working really good, and uh, he got shuffled on that left car. Dale Jr. knocked him sideways, and Ricky Rudd got, or Ricky Craven got into him. And he moves to the high side. Whoa. I think thinking Kevin Harvick in the 29. He's going to go up there with him. They'll be coming for two laps to go this time. Look at him beating and banging. Uh, 
And here goes Kenseth. He's there. He's there. Harvick's hanging down on Mark Jr. There. There though. Kenseth leads the white flag lap, but Jr. has the drafting help. Two to, to go, go I mean. Two to Excuse go. me. You're like I am. I thought it was. <laughs> but look, look uh -oh, at Jimmy uh -oh. Johnson. He's not going to give up either. He's going to the high side. He's going to make them three wide off turn two. Boy, Kenseth just chose the wrong lane. Now NASCAR is reviewing Dale Jr.'s pass as we speak. And well, it's certainly reviewable. I, I, I can't deny that. There's Harvick lined up behind Junior. Boy, if he's got, there they go. No, oh, gonna, Johnson. I'm just going to say, if he's got to make it without crashing. Come on back to the caution. Come on back to the caution. It's right. going to be it. Come on, baby. If the caution comes out, this will be the race right here. If they do throw the caution, indeed. No caution. No caution. No caution. No caution. No caution. One lap to go. Jimmy Johnson got his car going. So we're under green. We have another almost a lap of racing. Yeah, I just and thought, now, I just said to myself, if they can make it around without wrecking, I'll, I'll, I'll never believe that. Now, Dale Jr. becomes the Department of Defense. But you watch him, Daryl. I bet he'll hug that yellow line. He don't want to open up the bottom. NASCAR has called Jr.'s pass a clean pass. This is for the win. Can he do it, guys? It'd be four in a row. He has about a fourth of a lap to go. Remember, the start-finish line is way down headed into turn one. It's not in the center of the trial. You can't do it, Larry. You can't make it. You can't get, you're not going to pull out and pass him with a single foul like that. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Four wins at Talladega. Kevin Harvick second. Elliott Sadler third. Ricky Craven fourth. And Terry Labonte top five finish. <laughs> How about on Texas Terry? Six. NASCAR's review of the videotape showed in their eye that Dale Earnhardt Jr. was in the act of passing when he was forced below the yellow line. So the pass holds. Earnhardt's first to the checkered flag, and he goes to victory lane. And what a day getting there. I mean, he was involved. They had to change engines. Good job. He is one happy guy. He had to change out. engines, went to the rear of the field, involved in the big crash, lost the pack, almost was a half a lap down, and here he is, victory.